evening from Philadelphia, NBC Sports presents Game 2 of the 1980 World Series. The American League champions, the Kansas City Royals, against the National League champions, the Philadelphia Phillies. Brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Gillette, makers of right guard. Yes, men count on right guard because men first fire more. By Ford and your Ford dealers, who invite you to test drive the new 1981 Ford cars and trucks. And by Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi Cola bottler, who invite you to catch that Pepsi spirit. Another beautiful night here in Philadelphia. Another big crowd here at Veterans Stadium as we get ready for game two. A little bit warmer tonight. It is 58 degrees, and these Philly fans, they are ready. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Garagiola, and last night the Phillies won a big ball game. But maybe something even bigger happened when young Bob Walk was able to buy some time to rest that Philadelphia pitching staff. And one of the keys in that game last night was his ability to handle George Brett and Willie Wilson, one for nine combined. Well, Jim Fry, the manager, changed the lineup for Kansas City tonight. But if they are to win, George Brett has to hit, and Willie Wilson has to be that disruptive, productive force that he was this past season. But the pitching matchup is a good one. Two beauties, Tom. Oh, exactly right. Two of baseball's best left-handers will be on the mound tonight for game two. For the Royals, it's going to be 18-game winner Larry Gura. He throws four basic pitches, uses all the strike zone, and he'll, he'll change speeds very well tonight. For the Phillies, the man they call in Philadelphia is simply lefty, Steve Carlton. He was 24-9, just the best pitcher in the National League this year. And the Kansas City Royals got their first look at Tug McGraw last night. He simply got six quick outs. The Royals seem to be sitting on Tug's screwball. Tug fired a fastball right by him. But the starting pitchers, two left-handers with two very distinct styles. Tony, it was kind of a little things uh, game last night. It sure was. A couple of little things st stand out in my mind, Joe, about last night's ball game. They might become important. Larry Boa's steal of, in the third inning was a very daring base money move. The Phillies were down by four runs at the time. Both Leonard and White may have taken Boa for granted in that situation. But that steal sent a message to the Royals pitching staff, and it could linger throughout this World Series. Don't take our speed lightly is what he was telling them. Frank White sent the same kind of message later on in the ballgame, the seventh, when he stole second base with his team down by three. But, Joe, I agree with you mostly about Willie Wilson. When the Royals signed him, they knew what his amazing speed might do on this artificial surface, and he may prove it yet. Artificial surface seems to be the magic word. I'm going to agree with Richie Allen, who once said, and I think I'd be the same way, I don't like to play on grass that a horse can't eat. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as our colors are presented by the United States Army Color Guard from the Widener University ROTC, and we honor America with our national anthem, which will be sung by the original star of the Broadway show Annie, Philadelphia's Andrea McCardle.
Direct your attention to the VIP box on the right field side of the Phillies dugout where the ceremonial first pitch will be thrown out by a pitcher who won 20 or more games for six consecutive seasons, Phillies Hall of Famer Robin Roberts. throwing out the first pitch, a Hall of Famer. So the scene is set for game two. The Philadelphia Phillies and the Kansas City Royals. We'll be right back. You're the Pepsi generation, the spirit of today. And with every taste of life that's new, well, that Pepsi spirit shines right through. Easiest way to share a good time while it's still happening. Polaroid's One Step, the world's simplest camera. When your financial plan helps you keep up, so inflation won't get you down. You really believe in those IDS ideas. When her hard work earns a degree, but your investments help pay for it. You really believe in those IDS ideas. Good money ideas from your IDS representative. When they help you reach your goals. You really believe in those IDS ideas. Ideas to help you manage money from IDS. Hit, hit, and run. The official youth program of Major League Baseball. Historic double day field. Site of the 1980 finals competition. Twelve youngsters from across the country came here to compete at the home of baseball's Hall of Fame. From local competitions to this exciting moment, building self-confidence and learning the value of good sportsmanship. Pitch, hit, and run. The dream comes true. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Back here at Veterans Stadium, here is the lineup for the Kansas City Royals. Leading off in left field, Willie Wilson. Batting second, the shortstop, UL Washington. Batting third, doubtful for a while, but there he is, George Brett. In the cleanup spot, designated hitter, Hal McRae. In center field, Amos Otis. The catcher tonight will be John Watham. At first base, Willie Mays Aikens. In right field, Jose Cardinal. And batting ninth, Frank White. Take a look at the defensive alignment behind Steve Carlton, Lenny Smith, and left Maddox in center with Bride and right. Schmidt at third, Boat short. Manny Trio, the second baseman. Pete Rose at first. Bob Boone, the catcher. And the pitcher is lefty, Steve Carlton. So we're all set, Willie Wilson. 
who is the man who makes it go for Kansas City, leads it off. He was 0 for 5 last night. Strike one. Wilson was overpowered, absolutely overpowered last night by hard stuff, Tom. And Carlton does throw some hard stuff. Of course, Wilson from the right side today. Well, he's a young kid, Tony, 25 years old, and over five yesterday. I think it's, you know, it's, I think it'd be fair to say that he'd be pressing. He's got to be a little nervous, and he's pitching against a man who many would consider the best pitcher in baseball right now. One ball and two strikes to count on Steve, on uh, Willie Wilson. Steve Carlton likes to work in a hurry. A strike missed by the catcher Boone. He'll throw the first, and he gets it. One strikeout. Carlton registers 8.5 strikeouts per nine innings. A breaking ball got him. We'll let you start with that pitch for your scouting report, Tom, on Steve Carlton. That was a hellacious curveball. Well, he has just absolutely an awesome breaking ball, Tony. I mean, uh, the, the slider that he can throw to those right-hand hitters down and in, if he can establish that he can throw that slider where he wants to early in, these, in this game to these right-hand hitters, they'll commit to that pitch, and you'll see a lot of strikeouts. It looked like it's going to be a strike, especially with two strikes. You have to protect the plate. You go out there and strike to start to swing, and that ball breaks down and in right about your feet, and it's completely out of the strike zone. It's completely unhittable. UL Washington, strike one. Steve Carlton led the major leagues in innings pitched 304 and in strikeouts with 286. You might take note of the pace that Carlton sets. He likes to work in a hurry. And you might notice that just the second hitter, UL Washington, stepped out and made Carlton wait just on that last pitch. Larry Bull, a big hop. Two out. who said that the team, and, and uh, Frank White said it on the other side of the field, the team that makes all the routine plays defensively in this series might win it. Here's the man of the hour as far as this ballpark is concerned, George Brett. It was doubtful. They made an announcement at 6 o'clock, and as you heard, Brian Gumpel and Mickey Cobb, trainer, talking about George Brett, playing in considerable pain. There's no stranger to pain, this young man. left-hander really gives uh, Kansas City a little more trouble than right-handers. One of the reasons you negate Brett, you, if Wilson gets on, you hold his speed down and the base pass to steals, and Carlton has excellent move. One ball, one strike, two outs, top of the first, no score. Ball game just underway. Bouncing ball, up the middle. George Brett has a base hit. Brett is on with a single. Brett at first base. Well, we'll take a look. You heard Mickey Cobb, the trainer in Bryant Gumbel's show, as he chops a breaking pitch, a curveball down on the artificial surface. That's a turf hit. Said he'd have trouble running. George did not sprint down to first base as he ordinarily does. He usually makes a long, wide turn. If you bobble the ball, he keeps on going. He trotted down. Here's McRae. Pops up the first pitch. Right field side. Everybody give it a chase, and no one can get it. Strike one. Pete Rose, Manny Trio. It's actually a little bit easier play for the second baseman on this. Pete Rose had a shorter way to go, but he's trying to catch it like a football pass over the shoulder. But with Trio playing McCray up the middle a little bit and protecting for a steal from Brett, that possibility he couldn't get there. Paul Pryor, the man at first base tonight, the National League umpire. He got far off the plate, McCray stands. They got out. him. Close. He was leaning and he just got back. I thought they had him. He Mart had me picked up. Martinez is arguing for a ball call. Here it is again. He had Brett lead the other way. I do not believe he was even going at that point. He hadn't set. Fastball misses. Here it is again. Watch Carlton's head motion. When he's looking at you as he makes this step, if you look at his foot, you got a problem. But if you look at his head, you got a chance to solve it. When he is looking at you, sometimes, in fact, most times, he's going home. When he is looking home, he goes to first. It's the old Maury Wills theory. One ball, two strikes, two outs. 
Has he changed speed on his curveball much? It looked like he pulled the string on a breaking ball that time, Tom. He'll, he'll take to something off the breaking ball at times, uh, Tony, yes. But the, the big out pitch for him, especially in a two-strike situation like this, is that slider that's going to come down and in at a hitter's feet. Right field, base hit. George Brett rounding second. He's going to hold on. He stops at second. And Kansas City, base runners at first and second in the battery of Minnesota's. Brett may have stopped for two reasons. One, with two outs, he doesn't want to get thrown out at third. That would violate a cardinal rule of baseball. And aside from that, he did not run to second base well again. He is hurting. Well, Tony, he didn't he didn't run hard, it's true, but I just wonder the situation really doesn't dictate that he goes all out. We know he goes, he's an all-out kind of ball player, but a needless slide tonight with the problems he has. And well. I tell you, it's not funny, as Brian said, if you have that problem. And trying to play in a World Series. Well. Two outs. Bouncing ball. Mike Schmidt at third has it. The trio forces on. McRae is out, coming out from second. That ends the top half of the first inning. So we go into the bottom half of the first inning. There is no score. You still catch Tuna the old way with strong poles and strong arms. Let's take him home. But now comes Miller time. When it's time to relax. Time for the best tasting beer you can find. One beer stands clear. America's quality beer, Miller Highland. If you've got the time. We've got the beer. Introducing a car with better ideas from Germany, Japan, America, from around the world. Introducing a world car. The new Ford Escort, built in America with better ideas from around the world. Escort has higher gas mileage ratings than Rapid, Accord, Corolla Hatchback, yet it is roomier inside. And Escort has four-wheel independent suspension, front-wheel drive. Ford Escort, built in America to take on the world. Back here in the bottom of the first inning, here's the lineup for the Philadelphia Phillies. Leading off, Lonnie Smith in left field. Batting second, Pete Rolls, he'll be at first base. Jake McBride in right field. Mike Schmidt, the cleanup hitter at third base. A late start for Keith Moreland. Luzinski was scheduled, but Keith Moreland will be the DH tonight. Gary Maddox is in center field. Manny Rio is at second base. Larry Boa, the shortstop, and Bob Boone will be the catcher. The Royals defensively behind Larry Gura in left field. It'll be Willie Wilson, Amos Otis in center. Jose Cardinal has gone out to right field for today's ball game against the left-handed pitcher. George Brett at third, UL Washington in short. Frank White, the second baseman. Willie Mays Aiken at first. John Wathan becomes the catcher. Porter is not playing, or at least starting today. And Larry Gura, the pitcher. George Brett taking his infield tosses. Brett had to do some running in that first inning, so you make up your mind. There he goes on the ball, the base hit to right field by McCray. He did start out pretty well. With two outs, he's not taking any chance. He's going to hold right there. You know, he came out and tried to take a few ground balls during pregame practice, bent over a couple of times, and then went back in to get a water bottle or some hot stuff. for the Kansas City Royals, left-hander, of course, 11, 18, and 10 this, this year with a 2.95 ERA. Pitched more innings than he's ever pitched in his major league career. 283 innings pitched, the most he's ever pitched in the big leagues. A pretty good innings pitch and hit ratio, that 283 to 272 there. Pretty basic pitcher, fastball, slider, curveball, and a changeup. I guess you'd call him a control fastball pitcher. He has to use his fastball to be effective. And that fastball was set up as other pitches. A slider is a very good slider, good curveball, pretty good changeup. Tom, he has not had the number of good years or great years as Catfish Hunter did, but Gura will at times remind you of Catfish Hunter the way he changes speed on his fastball. He is not just a fastball changeup pitcher. He will have varying degrees of his fastball. And if you get him early, as the Yankees almost did the championship series, you can give him a problem. Once he gets in his groove, gets the rhythm, he can be tough hitting the corners, moving the ball around. Smith. Outside, ball one. That's another place.
place where you've got to wonder with the team speed of the Phillies whether they're going to test George Brett at third base. They made a move on that one with a fake punt attempt. Foul ball out of play. One ball, one strike. No score, bottom of the first. Kansas City threatened. There is Larry Gura. Larry, one of those athletes, so stays in shape all year round. High fly ball, center field. Amos Soda says, I'll take it. One out. Gura. I know he works out in the gym, but he's also his wife Cindy is nutritionist. And he's got a ritual during the days he pitches. He has lunch about 12:30. At about 3:30, he has to have some pasta for carbohydrates. Uh-huh. You too, Tom? Well, we had dinner the other night, Larry Gura and the pitching coach for the Kansas City Royals, Billy Connors, and we went out to have a bite to eat and I ask him you know as you would in all pictures you'd ask what do you have the night before you eat he says a nice big bowl of spaghetti he likes to get the carbohydrates up one ball no strikes two balls no strikes and I see in my neighborhood we had like a lot of guys that could eat spaghetti but couldn't get the ball over the plate <laughs> <laughs> manja pasta two and oh on Pete Rose and he made it happen last night straight away center field Otis is there two outs that's something that you saw in the championship series also as we look at Otis uh, is that Gura threw quite a few fly balls you would think of a guy who is not overpowering as being more of a ground ball pitcher but what he does is I think he gets the ball in on you he surprises you with a fastball you're looking for off speed stuff changes speeds and turned over fastball and the ball you're always late on his fastball he gets a lot of hitters out with that fastball McBride, what a night he had last night. Three for four, including a three-run homer. It's high, ball one. John Watham behind the plate. Shot from right field. That's pretty much what Cardinal's looking at. Good breaking pitch. One ball and one strike. Two outs, nobody on. Bottom of the first, no score. Is another one of those left-handed hitters, and he's got a lot of experience, but just still do it. Once you hit a home run, you get a left-handed pitcher, you continue to try and pull the ball, and they give you trouble. Two balls and a strike. I tell you, we've got a microphone down there. It's just great. Because baseball is not only a sight game, it's really a sound game. Ball off the bat, obvious. Off the shin guards, into the glove. Even picked up a handshake last night, a high five. Two balls, two strikes. Tell you what, we'll just let you hear this sound on this next pitch, whatever it is. Off the bat, George Brett. George Brett makes the play. Three up, three down for Philadelphia. We end one inning. It's nothing, nothing. Kansas City and Philadelphia. And two up for the Kansas City Royals. Here in this top half of the second inning. They'll lead off with John Watha. And then it'll be Willie Mays Aikens. And then Jose Cardinal. One, two, three, four, five. Trouble spots like these are what separate Gillette Atro from all ordinary razors. The reason? The Atro pivot. It keeps the blades at a perfect shaving angle, giving you a better shave than any razor that can't pivot. One, two, three, four, five. How many more reasons do you need? Gillette Atro, the pivot makes it better. Gillette, when it comes to shaving, we give you the edge. I was a secret money worrier until Connecticut General showed me how to reach financial independence in my lifetime. CG certainly came through for me. Come in through for you. That's what CG people do. My successful business became more successful after Connecticut General helped me work out a cash flow strategy. CG sure came through for me. Come in through for you. That's what CG people do. Call us. We'll come through for you, too. 
Can you see the difference between Firestone Steel Belted Trax 12 and other all-season radials? Firestone has special traction bars for pulling power in snow, but they're hidden in the Trax 12 tread for smooth, quiet turnpike driving. Long-lasting Trax 12, the all-season steel belted radial with traction you can see. Traction 12 months a year. Trax 12, Firestone's lowest-priced steel belted white wall radial. Thursday on Games People Play, Leif Garrett looks at the freewheeling world of skateboarding. Meet the champs of the wheelchair Olympics and see a boy in his bike attempt to jump over five trucks Thursday. Top half of the second inning, nothing, nothing to score. John Watson. So far in this World Series 0 for 1, a pinch hitter. Foul ball out of play, strike one. Jack of all trades this year for the Royals. Played the outfield, some first base. He's caught. In fact, the Porter missed about the first 30 ball games or more. He caught a lot of these pitchers, got him in the groove. Inside, one and one. You know, Tony, the way he stands at the plate reminds me a little bit of the way Steve Garvey approaches. Looks physically at the plate, looks a little bit the way Steve Garvey does. Off the handle, popped up. Pete Rose says, I'll take it. He does. Pistol Pete Rose. One away and it brings up Willie Mays Akins. He was with us last night. He had a little bit of a problem getting into the batter's box because the back line, he was sneaking out and Harry Wendell step, step kept getting it back in. But with that bat, he had no problem. Two tremendous home runs. And I had a second one. He really touched it off. I think, Joe, what you're seeing, too, a little bit here, exactly the point that you made in the first inning. Carlton likes to get the ball and pitch. Now, that last out, Akins was over there putting on his gloves, getting the pine tar, you know, just making sure he's not in any hurry, and Carlton's out there waiting on the mound. Willie making Mays, Carlton wait. Willie Mays Akins just made a mistake. He uncovered the white line. <laughs> he didn't want to do that. <laughs> he's got him right where he wants him now, doesn't he? There's the strike, taken all away. You might take a look at his front foot. He set but he kind of gets on his toe, much like a ballet dancer. There it is. Takes it outside. One ball, one strike. They use expressions in baseball like a mistake hitter, and Willie is one of them. He can, he can hit your mistake a mile. He spent his entire batting practice today hitting the ball the opposite way to left field in anticipation of the breaking stuff off Carlton. Three balls and one strike now. Zakins. Ball four. He drew the base on balls. Carlton doesn't walk that many. In fact, in 1980, Carlton, 2.7 walks per nine innings, his average. Strikes out 8.5, walks 2.7. I'll tell you, you can see why he wins 20 games. In fact, this was his fifth 20 game season this year. Cardinal. He has bounced around. Line drive foul, strike one. You think that isn't a thrill for this little guy who's played so many baseball games through the winter leagues down there and so many seasons in baseball with all the clubs you talked about to be in the World Series? <laughs> and to play in one for the first time today? What a break, too. You know, towards the end of the year, a couple clubs after him. He's always been underrated. When he was a younger kid, he had good speed, a fine throwing arm, had some power. Stole you some bases, ran the bases well. Booney just got hit with the foul tip, and that's the last thing he needed. He is really hurt. Cut fastball slider. Oh, that. Got underneath the mask. Oh. I want to is tell he you wearing? He, is he wearing one of those protective no. devices that Bill Bueller He's just and got Steve the Yeager devised? He just got the mask low. Oh, man. Now, why wouldn't a guy with that shingle hanging down or whatever you call it wear it all the time just for reasons like this? Look at that. That is mean. Cardinal takes it low and inside. One ball, two strikes. He threw that ball away. He's still in pain. Oh, you bet. Booney is hurting. I tell you, there are two places 
But you get hit in the groin and in the Adam's apple. Forget about it. You wish you'd gone to air conditioning school. That finger, that ball that came off that bat, Joe, hit him in the finger first and then went under the chin. You can see him. He made a fist after that ball went in there, that foul tip. And I think he did get hit in the finger. He's still flexing his fingers as he's walking back to home plate. You lose the feeling sometimes, and he's just trying to get it back. He didn't tear anything. When you get hit like that, you're afraid to look down because you feel like a loser. With one out, and Willie Mays Aikens at first base. Rose is not holding him on. He is no stolen base threat. So Pete's going back. Pick off. Look out. Sneaked in behind him. They had the count play on. And watch the head of Carlton. One ball, two strikes, one out. Looking home, going to first. If you get caught watching his foot, you might have a problem. Cardinal is called down on strikes. Tom, that pickoff move that he called, what, 11 balks last year, six this year, one of the things they call him, I think he learned from your old uh, teammate, Jerry Kuzman, where he stopped that leg and paused and tried to freeze the runners. There's the last pitch. Perfect pitch down low and away. Well, he did talk to Jerry Kuzman about the move, Tony, yes. And I think, uh, you know, he, he's got a very, he got a very touchy, you know, touchy delivery over there to first base. He steps way over here toward the dugout. And you hear a lot of people scream when he does go to first base. Here is Frank White. There are two outs, base runner at first, no score. Oops, he runs back now as Booney was able to come up with it. Willie Mays Aikens had some ideas when the ball got away from Booney. Boone back, able to hold the base runner at first. This stuff must be pretty live today because Boone doesn't hang on to this fastball. Look at that, he boxed it. Same thing happened on the hard breaking ball to Willie Wilson, the first man up for the Royals. Boone couldn't handle on it, hang on to it. Our jug's gun down there has got him about 89, 90 miles an hour on his fastball. Booney had a little trouble with that one. Tied up inside. I got a question the accuracy of the jugs gun if it got him only 89 miles I was going to say the same thing. They say that the last two years he's thrown the hardest he's thrown in the past five or six. One ball, one strike. Two balls and a strike. There are two different guns. I've forgotten the brand names of them, but one registers about five miles per hour consistently faster than the other. He had a good cut at a fastball. The count, two balls and two strikes with two outs. Willie Mays Aikens is on at first base. There's no score. We're in the top of the second. And there he is. These Royals, they swing the bat at the American League and hitting with a 286 batting average. He missed the third strike, so did Boone. And now Aikens moves his second. White is on it first, and Boone is catching Carlton like he's being crossed up a lot. Well, I'll tell you, I just looked over while that was going on to Seaver, and this ball goes down. I don't think it's a slider. That baby's got something on it. What You're are not you saying? Are you saying that there's a foreign substance on the uh, ball? Uh, would, you, would you say that here to me I, or I would, what? I would say I think he's got a nasty slider, uh, and he gets his hand on top of the ball and drives uh -huh. it right down into the ground. Uh-huh. You never did trust us pitchers, did you, Tony? <laughs> I trust you less now if you said that. <laughs> they call it a strikeout, obviously, but a wild pitch. And Frank White is on at first. Aikens is on at second. That's fouled off by Willie Wilson. So once again, Kansas City threatens. See, Joe's an expert on that, too. He was a catcher, Tom, as everyone well knows. There are the base runners, Aikens at second and White at first. And you guys never told on pitchers either. We told our own guys. Chopper foul. Joe, Joe caught back when that pitch was legal, too, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, tell you, I think that's the most overrated thing in the world. What is? The uh, spitball and all, it, it, they legalize it, and that honey cut for putting a thumbtack in there and cutting an umpire, that, that's got to be a man behind home plate tonight. Bill Kunkel caught honey cut. Fastball oh. misses, and oh. it's one oh. ball, two strikes. Carlton thought he had it. So we've had a base on balls and a strikeout that wasn't a strikeout when the wild pitch on the third strike by Carlton. Inside misses and it's two balls and two strikes. Wilson was out on strikes his first time. He got him. That's his fourth strike. 
go into the bottom half of the second inning, there's no score. And if you're like me, when you saw that ball get by Boone, did you not go back to the Yankees and Dodgers World Series with Mickey on? Let's look at a flashback right now. With two out, the Dodgers lead four to three. Hugh Casey needs just one more strike to even the series at two games apiece. Henrik swings and misses. So does Brooklyn catcher Mickey Owen. Henrik reaches first safely, starting a chain reaction that leads to a Yankee victory seven to four. You know, Ethel, I think it's time we sold the old homestead. Who do we call? We handle the who do you call. Where do you turn? What are you going to do? Trust the Realty World folks in blue to cover it all for you. Your local Realty World associate is specially trained to sell your house quickly, even helping with buyer financing Ooh. information. Oh, uh, we could do it. <laughs> Realty World covers all the details. We'll cover it all for you. RCA wants you to see the right color. Does your television automatically capture all these subtle shades of blue in this ocean of color? Color Track 1981 can. With RCA's exclusive detail processor, Color Track separates detail from color, refines it, then locks the right color on track. Even colors only subtle shades apart. Color Track 1981. RCA is making television better and better. Man's cooking, the music smokes, but not me, because like a lot of my friends, I use Skull smokeless tobacco. I just take a pinch of that good taste and wintergreen flavored Skull between my cheek and gum, and it gives me real tobacco pleasure without ever lighting up. So when you want something that smokes, listen to the Charlie Daniels band, but when you want real tobacco enjoyment without smoking, try Skull. A pinch is all it takes. Thank you. We appreciate it. Lost River Lake was a thriving resort until Piranha, a mutant breed of man-eating fish. There'll be no way to contain it. First time on TV, Thursday. Listen to what people are saying about John Myers. He's honest. He's one good, honest congressman we've got in Washington. He's responsive. He sends out questionnaires constantly that let us reply to him the way we feel, and then he listens, and he votes the way we ask him to. He's a leader. Though he's been voted down many times, he has stood up and been counted for what he believes in. John Myers, honest, responsive, a leader for the 80s. I wouldn't miss voting for John. All classic flashbacks. Ball one. Brett has it. Here's the long throw. One out. You know, the Phillies, you would think, with most of their power from the right side. Lezinski, although he's not there, Schmidt. Now let's look at this replay from our left center field camera. Got something in on his fist, Tom. Huh? May have been a, a fastball that sailed in on him or a slider. Could have been a sailing fastball slider inside, Tony. No, the thing I, I think about when I look at, at Schmidt after the plate, he's been silent all the way through the playoffs, was silent really in the first game. If he busts open, you know, the Phillies could absolutely run away with it. But he's been silent for about six games in a row now. When he gets in one of those streaks, he can throw about anything in the strike zone. He's got a chance to pop it out of the park. Here's Keith Moreland, who is a late starter. Luzinski had an intestinal virus, and Moreland's had a, a good year for these Philadelphia Phillies. Luzinski with a 102 fever. One ball, two strikes. Started talking a while about, about the power the Phillies' right hand, and you'd think they do well against left handers. They've been 21 and 17 this year. Those kind of cold stats can be deceiving, but they haven't overpowered left handed pitching as much as you'd think. Two balls and two strikes. Dallas Green, Herm Sturette. More than 26 years old, born in Dallas, now lives in Louisville. Signed by Doug Gassaway, number seven selection, the 75 draft. Well hit. Wilson's back, he makes the grab, and once again, that great speed. Speed will just erase a lot of mistakes. He can just simply outrun that ball. Moreland hit the ball very well, Joe. Hit it right on the nose, turned on it, line drive right over Wilson's head, and Wilson has outstanding speed. He's a young guy from Summit, New Jersey, and I recruited him. 
Willie Wilson for USC football, believe it or not, about five or six years ago, ended up signing with the Royals. Here is Gary Maddox, first ball, fastball hitter. Takes it outside, ball one. What, impre what impresses me about Wilson or his neighborhood, he was the fourth fastest guy in his neighborhood, he tells me. Couldn't make the track relay team. One ball, one strike. Can you imagine running that fast, being fourth? Those guys must have afterburners and radial feet. He takes advantage of that speed, not only on the base pass, but defensively, because he's playing a very shallow left field in this ballpark, and the ball uh, carries very well. One and one on Maddox, two outs. Off the handle and off the foot, he is down. That is painful. Breaking ball down. Here comes a Philadelphia trainer, Lee Elia coming in. Maddox is up. Look at that. That's the one that'll get you. The slider down and in. Well, I'll tell you what, Tony, I'm not a hitter, and I've, I'm not a very good hitter. I, those things don't happen to me, and I, you see that happen to hitters quite often, and it is extremely painful, and it affects them for an entire day. That ball comes right down off the bat, and that really hurts. That's well, an ouch. It's made uh, quite a few hitters wear shin guards. Bucky Dent did for a while. Ted Williams, of course, Vic Wirtz. Vic Wirtz. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Maddox is ready. Money on, no score. Struck him out, so Gora retires three in a row. He's retired the first six men. At the end of two, there is no score. Kansas City nothing, Philadelphia nothing, and do up for the Kansas City Royals. It'll be UL Washington, George Brett, and Hal McRae. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Complete coverage of the major political campaigns reported by NBC's critically acclaimed news team on NBC Nightly News and weekday mornings on Today. WTWO, Terre Haute. Announcing the provider from Terre Haute First National. It's the bank club that's out of this world. It provides you with the most frequently used banking services and more, from no minimum balance checking and unlimited personalized checks to $10,000 insurance and travel discounts. We think you'll like the provider, but decide for yourself. Come to any Terre Haute First National Bank and ask for our brochure about bank clubs. It really tells it like it is. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Sayers. Hey! Hey, wait! Wait! I'm a scroll! <laughs> WTWO, Terre Haute. Another big crowd here at Veterans Stadium. We're in the third inning, no score, UL Washington. We'll lead it off here. Washington bounced out, short to first, his first time up. the first pitch foul. You know, we talk about that toothpick that UL Washington constantly has. There you see it. For you youngsters who are watching, it's okay for UL Washington. He's been doing it, but I wouldn't do that. I mean, it doesn't help you. It's one of those 50-50 things, and it could be very, very dangerous. You don't need, really need it. UL does, so let's root for him, but don't you put it in your mouth. One ball, one strike. The Royals had to have lefty on the ropes in the first two innings. They've left four men on, two in each of the first and second inning. The base hit may have swung, if there is such a thing as momentum in baseball, back into their favor after yesterday. Two balls and one strike to count here. You know, a baseball game has a, a flow to it, be it the pitcher, the hitting, and the crowd is a factor. I don't know if it's affecting you as a viewer. Let me try to express it. 
two and one to count. And there's the strike. First of all, Carlton likes to pitch in a hurry. The batters are slowing him down. When the Phillies bat, this crowd really gets itself up. But now, with the Kansas City Royals batting, it's choir practice time. It doesn't matter to Carlton. He's got cotton in his ear somewhere anyway, doesn't he? To block out the crowd, he does that to maintain his concentration. You hear a little buzz with the crowd. Listen. Obviously, an awesome pitcher, awesome slider, and this is a fastball on the outside part of the plate. I think that the Royals got a pretty good scouting report on, on Carlton in the sense they want to make him wait, make him wait. But sometimes it doesn't affect him. It doesn't seem to bother him. He just stands there and waits till the hitter gets in until the hitter is ready, and then he goes right after him. Here is George Brett. He's single. Strike. team has ever won a world's championship. Line drive. Base hit. I don't know about his running, but his bat is not bothered, I'll tell you that. Well, that ball looked like it was catchable. That may have gotten in the lights. Bro, uh, Brett hit the ball very well. It was sinking, but when it came off the bat, McBride started backing off. Here it is. Charted Isles, theories and perfection. His run. Still not running real well. But that ball was catchable. It looked like it was catchable when he first hit it, Tony. Then McBride did back up on the ball in right field. But Ray doesn't get the first pitch, and it's strike one. George Brett, two for two. McRae, the batter, he singled the right field his first time up, taking a good look at his third base coach, Cody McKenzie. He is a very smart hitter, and with Trio and Rose holding Brett, allowing a big hole, he shoots that direction. Is pretty good move. Fastball misses. Tom, the ball, as we see Gordy McKenzie, the third base coach for the Royals, giving a series of signs to McCray, who's out of the box, and Brett. The fastball that Carlton struck out UL Washington with down and away, it looked like he turned it over. It was still very hard, but he throws two kinds of fastball, it looks like. Hit left field. George Brett will stop at second base. So McRae is two for two. Brett and McRae, they've been able to solve Carlton, but the rest of the lineup, forget about it. He has just stuck termites in the bats. Otis is the batter. He had no force play to end that first inning. One man. last night three for four with a home run no score we're in the third inning last night the Phillies won at seven six fouled off strike one it's been a crazy two and a third innings for Kyle that he has struck out five and yet he's had six base runners so you don't know if he's really overpowering or he's making that one bad pitch or they're just hitting good pitches on him. We've got that jugs gun on him. It says 88, 89 miles an hour, but you can't throw fastballs by people the way he has thrown 88 or 89 miles an hour. He's got to be throwing better than that, Tony. Granted, he's got a great curveball and the outstanding slider, but his fastball, at least from up here, looks a lot faster than what the gun has. It. There's a double play ball. The ball won. So we go into the bottom half of the third. There is no score. Kansas City nothing, Philadelphia nothing. Do up for the Phillies. It'll be Manny Trio, Larry Baugh, and Bob Boom. See this little baby? No other pocket camera does what it does. It's unique because only the new Kodak Ectralite cameras have built-in Sensolite flash. Sensolite flash turns itself on and flashes automatically when you need more light. It even turns itself off. You'll never worry about flash again. These new cameras with Sensolite flash are the easiest to use Kodak pocket cameras ever. I trust my stories to cameras and film from Kodak, America's storyteller.
In this country, winter isn't a season. It's a warning, telling you it's time to move down from the cold, down toward a place called Miller Time, and the best tasting beer you can find. When it's time to relax, one beer stands clear. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller Beer. Introducing an American car designed for a changing world and with a commitment to quality. Introducing the beautifully new Ford Granada. Built with a new design. Smaller in size, yet more spacious than ever before. Built with Granada's highest mileage ratings ever. And built with Ford's quality control system. 38 different inspectors examine every single car. The new Granada. Built for a changing world from Ford. here at Veterans Stadium, and you know all year long, Merle Harmon and Ron Luciano have been our broadcasting partners, and right now, Merle Harmon is with Dodgers manager Tom Lasorda. Let's go to Merle. All right, Joe and Tommy, as a rookie manager, you won a pennant with the Dodgers and came back and won the next year. You got two rookie managers in the World Series this year. What's it like? I'll tell you, that has to be the greatest thing that ever happened to me, was, you know, to be the manager of the Dodgers in 1977 and to manage them in the World Series, and of course, we came back in 78, and both of them happened to be against the New York Yankees, but what a thrill, and I can certainly know how Dallas Green and Jim Fry feel right at this moment. Okay, Tommy, thank you very much. Now back to the booth. Okay, here's Manny Trio. There's the strike. Might add, if you're like me and you look at a picture and you see the people behind them, Donald Davidson and Tony Siegel of the Houston Astros seated right behind them, and again, our congratulations to the Astros and Yankees for the battle Wishing, knowing that maybe for a break or two they would have been here. Oh, just a mess of baseball people here, Tony. A lot of managers. John McNamara, we saw him. But right now it's Larry Gura, who's retired six in a row. Misses with a fastball. One ball, two strikes. One of the reasons, George, John McNamara told us before the ball game is a lot of trade talk goes on at World Series time. Hospitality suites and they start throwing players around. That's what the time's all about. Whitey Herzog is here and he uh, says he's going to name a Cardinal manager right as soon as the World Series is over. See Bob Sheffing, Joe McDonald in the Mets, Joe Torre is here in the Mets. One two pitch, straight away center field. Amos Soto's been busy. This will be his third put out, and there it is. Of the seven outs have been balls hit in the air, one ground ball, one strikeout. You can just see, Tom, how off ball the hitters think they are on the ball and it sneaks in on them a little bit or they're a little bit out in front as Trio just was. Just off balance, that change of speeds. We use that jug gun a lot. We look at our run average leaders. We say we think of sheer speed as doing it, but it's that change of speeds along with other things. Larry Boa pops it up. Foul territory, George Brett should make the play. He does. There are two outs. George Brett was a doubtful starter. You've been with us in the pregame show. The trainer explained his problem. He had a severe attack of, of hemorrhoids, and he's playing in tremendous pain. It has not bothered his swing at all. He's two for two, but it does bother him running. Here's Bob Boone. Big night last night. Three for four, two doubles. Ball is a strike. Guys, this game goes along. If George Brett does have to slide, it might not bother him so much after all, because he does a lot of head first sliding anyway, like Pete Rose. Fast ball misses. One ball and one strike with two outs. Gura in and out, up and down, puts a little on, takes a little off, never gives you the same pitch twice. His first appearance in a World Series. Low, two balls and one strike. 18 and 10, a 2.95 earned run average. Averages 3.4 strikeouts per nine innings, 2.4 walks per nine innings. 18 wins is personal high. Dedicated young man. Pop foul out of play. Tom, when you 
watched Gura, and I know you haven't seen a whole lot of him. Is there anybody you can think of in the National League that resembles his style of pitching, a left-hander? Well, I've watched him go through here in the, in the, in the well, I'll say nine hitters so far. There's nobody that I can really think of exactly like him left-handed. I think the only person who would remind me of him would be Don Sutton of the Dodgers from the right-hand side. Center field, Amos Soto says, well, I'll catch this one, too. He does. It's three up and three down. He has retired the first nine, so it's nine in a row. After three innings of play here, we have no score. Top of the fourth inning, Watson will lead it off for Kansas City. He popped to the first baseman his first time up. It's a strike. You're right. I'm just looking at that close-up that Harry Carl got for us, he does, the way he holds his bat, look like Steve Garvey. The way he starts, Tony, it reminds me of Steve Garvey anyway. Strike two. Keep in mind this thing we call pacing because Carlton, I think, there's a baseball saying, be in a hurry to win, don't be in a hurry to lose. Bertie Tebbett says that the late great Joe McCarthy used that a lot as we look at George Brett. And that's what Carlton does, sets his own pace outside. One ball, two strikes. And this crowd, listen to the buzz. Fly ball, right field, big McBride. And that's about as polite an out reception as you'd want. The crowd is similar today as it was last night in the ball game when the Phillies got down by four. But after Boa Steele and the base hit and Rose getting hit, I'll tell you, they almost blew us right out of here. Here is Willie Mays Aikens. He goes through a little ritual with that back line, gets that toe up there, turns his back, kind of peeks over his shoulder. There's a strike. He walked his last time up. He's moved up a little bit closer on the plate from last night, possibly to protect against that slider and curveball from Carlton. One ball, one strike. There it is. He's out of the box again, isn't he? and one strike. He's digging and he's just kind of messing around with that dirt back there. So he's trying to cover up the line a little bit. Oh, we'll let Ron Luciano. He explained it last night. He keeps creeping back, Ronnie. Yeah, but that's big Bill Kunkel behind the plate there. And Bill's seen him all year long. And the ruling on that, look, if any part of that foot is touching the, uh, the line, then he's considered in the box. And with a size 12 foot, look out. he has. Look at that. Hit center field off Carlton. It just hit off the side. But I got to ask you something, Ron. Why does an umpire tell a hitter? It, doesn't the rule say that if he hits the ball in fair territory, you're not supposed to tell him, but then you're supposed to call him out? You're absolutely right, but you don't think the umpire is going to stand down here and say, hey, Willie, you're out and 65,000 people shoot him. Uh, rules are rule. Uh, rules are rule, but you make, the, you make the catcher and the manager and everybody else come out and say, hey, do this and do that. And then if they put enough pressure, we'll do it. Otherwise, we're going to keep quiet and stand back there and not have any trouble. Okay, good idea. Here's Cardinal. Hi, <laughs> Hopper. cool evening here at Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia, a packed house here at Veteran Stadium, enjoying a battle of left-handers in game two. We've played three and a half scoreless innings. Steve Carlton overpowering at times with five strikeouts, but he's allowed five hits. Counter to that, the Royals have been wasteful, hitting into two double plays, stranding five runners. Defensively, Larry Gurr has mowed him down. He's retired nine straight. We're still playing a waiting game as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Joe? Okay, Brian. Here's Gurr against Lonnie Smith. And listen to the difference in the crowd. with the speed of Lonnie Smith. One ball and one strike. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Phillies. No runs, five hits, no errors for Kansas City.
side, two and one. You know, you can hear the fans, Joe, coming alive. They want a little something to, to yell about. Larry Gura has very quietly gone onto the mound, retired nine men in a row. Ball has, you know, there's been one ball that's really been hit very hard by the Philadelphia hitters. They'd like to see a little action here. No hits by the Philly hitters yet. It's out of play. Seven of nine have been uh, balls hit in the air, the outs, one strike, one ground ball, and Tom, we make too big of a deal sometimes of the jugs gun, I think, as far as speed. There are other things involved getting hitters out. Well, there's three things when you talk about a fastball, where it goes, the movement it has, and how fast it goes. And Larry Gurr is a master at changing speeds on his fastball, different speeds of fastball. There's his strikeout, his second strikeout, took something off the curveball. So there's one away. And it brings up Pete Rose. And there is Maury Wills, who was one of our broadcasting partners and now a manager for the Seattle Mariners. Watching the ball game, rookie manager, waited a long time for his chance. And he looks happy. There are many, many baseball people here, as we mentioned as we look around the crowd. Here is Pete Rose. Once again, hit again. You know, that shot he took in the knee last night, that's going to be one of those famous World Series pictures, I think, as he scowled at the pitcher, Leonard, and then went out to the mound and detoured the first base. Ten years from now, that'll oh. be a fall classic flashback. Yeah. <laughs> Two balls and no strike. But I tell you, it does trigger a lot of thoughts. Listen to the crowd. Two balls and a strike. in the fourth. Twelve in a row, retired by Gurup. You know, Tony, you talk about twelve in a row. Maybe I'm hooked on these flashbacks, but I keep thinking Bevins. Larson's perfect uh -huh. game. Huh? McBride. McBride popped to the third baseman. play. If I said to try to retire 12 in a row, I meant 11, of course. I gotta ask Tom this. Of the factors that you mentioned that a pitcher does, speed, etc., which one of those, if this is possible to answer, is the one that might get all the fly balls for pitchers Gura's getting? Probably movement, I would say. Only movement at the ball as it gets the hit it gets to the hitting zone out in front of home plate. And uh, he might be throwing a pretty good fastball outside, but then when he comes back inside to those hitters, the, the point you made before, he might put a little extra pop on it. They never get to it, pop the ball up. Right to Frank White. Another perfect inning for Larry Gora. Three up and three down. Now he is retired, 12 in a row. We complete four innings here, and the score, Kansas City nothing, Philadelphia nothing. And due up will be Frank White, Willie Wilson, UL Washington, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Game two of the 1980 World Series, the Phillies won last night's game seven to six after the Royals have gotten off to a four to nothing lead. You know, Tom, listen to you and Tony talk about pitching. Warren Spahn had it pretty simple. He said the pitcher needs two pitches, one they're looking for and one to cross them up. And that looks like what Gura is doing. We're at the top of the fifth. Frank White, Willie Wilson, UL Washington against lefty Steve Carlton. Ground ball, broken back. Gura. Oh, a short hops it to Rose, one out. The Royals have had Steve Carlton in trouble. Two base hits in the first. They stranded both runners. A walk, a strikeout. The man reached base, stranded two in that inning. They had two more base hits in the third, a double play. They had a base hit in the fourth, another double play. Corey Liable is somewhere up in the heavens. Fouled out of play. We're at the top of the fifth. No score in the ball game. There's, There's our man, <laughs> the handheld camera, Corey Liable, up in the light standards. We have had excellent coverage. We hope you think so also. Last night's ball game, a lot of tricky plays for Harry Coyle and our engineers and cameramen to try and capture the rundown play with Lonnie Smith, Brett charging him, Boone scoring. 
UL Washington lying out in short left field. Right now, Willie Wilson, no balls, one strike, one out. Wilson has struck out both times in this ball game. Carlton is five. Good curveball, 0-2. a natural right-handed hitter. We told you in our little pregame spot, they doubted seriously whether he would hit or not. Another break, the ball boom, hangs on, so Carlton gets strikeout number six. You know, Tony, we're sitting here watching two very fine pitchers throw here tonight. Carlton using a lot of breaking balls. Steve Carlton, a very big man, 6'5", about 220 pounds, with 304 innings this year. A real workhorse for the Phillies. There's Jim Fry in the Kansas City Royal dugout. Wilson now has struck out three times in this ballgame, five times in the first two series games. UL Washington, the ground out, and he also struck out. One strike, says Bill Kunkel. Kansas City, no runs, five hits, no errors. The Phillies, no runs, they've not gotten a hit off. Gura yet. They have committed no errors. In the top of the fifth with two outs. Breaking ball, a vicious one. 0 oh, 2. Even that youngster thought yeah. that was a pretty good curveball. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the way I used to swing it, my mouth wide open saying, why? I wonder as we look at Herm Sturette, Dallas Green, Sturette, the pitching coach, if Carlton just doesn't have his fastball in it because he's gone much more so far tonight to that breaking ball. Throwing many more breaking balls than, than really I think you would normally see. Tony, I think that's just a factor of 304 innings. Her ball again, but it's chopped foul. Pitch a lot of innings over a great number of years. Been a workhorse. 304, not easy innings. 304 hard innings. Steve isn't a, you know, he doesn't spot the ball in the sense of here and there. Whether he comes at you 100%. Big, strong man, and he comes right after you. Two strikes to count on UL Washington. With no score in this game, we're the fifth. Fastball way outside. Carlton, a tremendously conditioned athlete. This spring when Dallas uh, Green, the manager, was starting to get the guys to toe the line, had his pitchers run a lot more, Carlton did. And when Dallas Green went through his routine, he said, buddy, you don't have to because there's nobody in this ball club and probably in the league could go through all your stretching exercise, uh, the lifting, the Nautilus stuff, and that garbage can full of rice that he digs into. Have you tried that, Tom? No, I haven't been oh, into it's that unreal. Yet. Two balls, two strikes, two outs to UL Washington. Curveball, could be a base hit. Bo can't reach it. Scoots through on the artificial surface. So Washington's on. He's got speed with two outs. There's a possibility of a steal. And UL Washington, those are not initials for his first and middle name. It's just UL Washington as we watch the replay go there. It's really some people have names. He's got a name after taxes. UL, just initials. Carlton waits now as George Brett with a two for two day steps in. George is single to center. He is single to right in front of Bate McBride. So once again, they've got somebody on. They've had a man on base off Carlton in every inning. UL Washington with a good lead on Carlton at first base. He's going to first. UL Washington during the season. 20 stolen bases, caught just seven times. He's got a bigger lead this time. He's coming over again. Two outs, Brett the hitter facing Carlton. Boy, he is aggressive. Look at him get off that base, Joe. Well, I have to believe that was a decoy move by Carlton. You can bet me because when he popped a good move on, you could see Washington break back to first. One ball, no strike. And once again, and the pattern so far has been consistent with the man on first. If he's looking at the base dealer, he's going home. Let's see if he continues. He's pausing. He's going to first. Two outs, no score in the game. Brett McRae with four base hits, the number three and four hitters for the Royals. Curveball outside. down at Gordon McKenzie as UL Washington takes another lead. He's seen a lot of moves from Carlton, both to home plate and to first. Third ball inside, 3-0. And, oh, and now with UL Washington, a steal threat, even a veteran as we look at McKenzie again, the third base coach, Carlton has lost his control. 
I would believe even a veteran can get his attention divided in the seal situation. Outside, Brett Sahn. So, once again, the Royals have two men on base, first and second, and McCray on. McCray coming to bat with two outs. McCray single to right, single to left. Hal McCray. A base hit. Eight score, their only run thus far. Curveball outside, one strike. We've got two outs here in the vet in Philadelphia. Maddox in center field. There is Brett, the runner, at first. UL Washington second. Maddox a little bit toward right center field on McCray. Good fastball, good movement. I got to wonder, Tom, also, if Carlton has not tried to establish that curveball a little bit, maybe it will begin to make his fastball look that much better. Well, maybe thinking that his fastball wouldn't develop until later in the game. Definitely throwing a lot of curveballs early. Hopefully, hopefully, maybe his fastball will come around. Two count, he went to the slider. Now it's one ball, two strikes. It looks to me, Tony, like his front side is flying, flying, flying open awfully quick. He, he didn't pitch to Brett very well. Well, the string on the curve, when you say flying open, explain, does that mean his arm's going to drag behind? Exactly. The front arm, it would be Steve Carlton's right arm when it come, when he comes to home plate, would be flying open. And then his left arm would never, never be able to get through and get to the strike zone. He threw four pitches to Brett. None of them seemed to be very, very much near the strike zone. Ball, two strikes, two outs. The fifth inning here in Philadelphia, game number two of the World Series. There's no score. Way inside, goes two and two. Here's the pitch he wants to make it happen right here at 2 2. He's, he's going to lose a little bit of the edge with UL Washington in second, Brett at first if he goes to three and two, and McRae pretty well knows that. Carlton has thrown a lot of pitches, and he has not yet through five innings. Is it. Count goes full. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The runners will be on the move. This will also be a good test for George Brett at first base. He'll have to run hard as soon as the ball starts to the plate. We'll be able to see him. Coach is already learning the base runners. Make sure he goes home. Here comes the pitch. The runners on the move. Fouled off by McCray. And I tell you, I was watching Brett. He is guaranteed hurting. And he had better be careful at first base because Carlton and Rose have a pickoff play in this situation where Rose will sneak behind the runner. It'll be a count play. Carlton will put on the tricky move, throw behind the runner at first base. So George has got one thing in mind. Make sure he goes home. Three and two, two outs. The fans start chanting again. And there's another one. Keep quiet, nobody covering. Fouled off by McCray. You know, when you have a fella out there like Carlton with a good move like McClure in Milwaukee, you get all kinds of different instructions as a base runner. Jim Fry, I think, gave the best advice to a bad base runner when McClure was pitching. He told Scotty McGregor, a pitcher, put your left foot on the bag and just stretch as far as you can with your right. <laughs> well, Brett and UL Washington, a little bit base runner, better right. base runner than that, but it's three and two once again and two out there on the move. He got him. Tremendous sinking type pitch as Carlton pitches out of another one. Kansas City has now stranded seven through five. The score here in Philadelphia, well, there isn't any. Two up for Philadelphia the fifth. Mike Schmidt, Keith Marlin, Gary Maddox. A beautiful shot from way up high, a veteran stadium in game number two of the 1980 World Series. We're going to the bottom of the fifth, Schmidt, Marlin, and Maddox. Tony, when his game started, it was 58 degrees. It's dropped three degrees, but it's a delightful evening here. Just a perfect night, I think. 55 degrees right now. Larry Gura with 18 wins on the season has retired 12 consecutive Phillies. Nine have been on balls hit in the air. Two strikeouts, one ground ball. The fans start hooting for Mike Schmidt, who grounded out in the second. Gura with outstanding off-speed stuff. He's really changed speed on his fastball, mixed in a slider. They are deep in the end. 
right field and the outfield for Schmidt. Way outside by Gura, one ball. There's the defensive alignment. You can see UL Washington in a hole defensively. And short stop. Otis deep in left center field slightly. Good pitch. Low on the outside corner, one and one. That's what Larry Gura's done so far tonight. It's not a lot of hit. Two balls and one strike, so Gura drops behind. And you can hear the fans, if you can't make out what they're saying, it is, we want a hit. Two and one to Mike Schmidt. No score, no hits being allowed by Gura to this point. Right there in the outside part of the plate. Outside corner count goes two and two to Schmidt. Gura pitched a one hitter against Toronto earlier this year. Damaso Garcia led that game off with a single, then he retired everybody else. Count goes full, three balls, two strikes. Schmidt wants to look at the ball. Second base umpire, Don Dinkiger, American League, out to get a Frisbee. Kunkel at home plate, prior at first, Don Dinkiger at second, Dutch Renner at third, left field foul line, Nick Bremigan, right field foul line, Harry Wendelstadt. <laughs> the umpire got booed for missing the Frisbee. That's Dutch Renner. He's the guy who knew that last night the imposter was up at home plate with the other umpire. He said he thought it was cute, had a few laughs. Some did at World Series time, however. <laughs> so it's a three and two count with no score in this ball game. We're at the bottom of the fifth. Gura facing Mike Schmidt. <laughs> Fouled off. Got took from the mask. Watch his foul tip. It gets Kunkel pretty good. Straighten the mask, and as Luciano knows, when you get hit like that, it's like putting your head in a bell. Three and two, Mike Smith facing Gura. Gura ball hit deep to left field. If it is fair, it is way out of here, but foul. He threw him a breaking ball down and in, which is a power spot for Mike Smith. Breaking ball inside. Watch Schmidt. Schmidt watch this ball now. He knows it's going foul. He gets a little bit of body angle. He's staying there. Get in there. Get in there. Carlton Fisk in 75 at work, but it didn't work this time. When a guy hits the ball as hard as Schmidt just does, it usually hooks by a lot. Three and two again. Chopper. Brett to his left. Aikens, they retire Schmidt. 13 in a row retired by Larry Gura. He's got the no-hitter going. It's still early. Just the fifth inning. Right now, we're going to remind you this telecast is presented by Authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. I did it fast because I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> He lined to left field in the second. One strike. You know, Tony, watching Gura work here, he's been behind twice as all during the entire game. Both times to Pete Rose. He was two balls and no strikes to Pete Rose. Got him to out both times. Tough play, tough play. You out Washington. Is surface, but Marlin breaks the straight, the first base hit off Larry Gurr. No doubt about it, it was a base hit. He digs hard, and I'm sure he'll be talking like he always does, not too pretty, but effective. You outdid everything he could, but it was just impossible to get Marlin. It was close, though. 
I'll tell you, UL Washington made it close. Portland doesn't run that well. This is a good shot from the left field camera. Had George Brett maybe been healthy, got a good chance of making that play. Tony, you know a lot better. Seen him a lot more, many more times than I have. Tom, he is a very aggressive third baseman. He makes some errors and is in consistent throwing, but he goes after a lot of balls. He's one of these divers. He dives after balls and gets back up. Now it's Maddock who struck out in the second. We still have no score. Set. That was it by Moreland. He beat out a ground ball, a deep short. Deep to left, but it's going to be foul. Tom, what does that do to a pitcher when he's pitching good? Not the base set, but Schmidt hit the ball hard, and now Maddox hit the ball hard. Does that put a doubt in your mind? Well, not the way they hit it, Joe. No, really. I think a 3-2 and two pitch, Gura's only been 3-2 and two on one hitter, and that was Mike Schmidt. He got in a 3-2 and two situation. He fell back a fastball, and they threw a curveball, and got way out in front of him. So Schmidt really did what Larry Gura wanted him to do. He got him way out in front. Of course, the fastball, he grounded out. I think a guy like Gura gets a lot of balls hit hard and foul territory off him anyway because he pulls the string, and if you're right on it, or if he's just off the inside corner, if you're going to hit it well, you're going to pull it foul. Otherwise, it jams you. Two balls, one strike. So Gura once again behind the hitter. As Tom told you, this is the third one now. It's behind Maddox with Moreland down at first base. We're the bottom of the fifth. Marlin with a good lead. He does not have good speed. Gura facing Maddox. Wathen flashing the signs. He wanted to go inside at first. Now he's changed his pattern. He moves outside. You can probably see Gura does not have the outstanding move that Steve Carlton does. One out. Front. He fooled him again, fouls it off, count goes two and two. Every once in a while, Tom, Gura, when he pulls the string and it's a sinker ball, that ball almost reacted like a screwball. Ball to run away from the right-handed hitters. Maddox, a good contact hitter with two strikes. Gura, very good at changing speeds. Looks like they're going back outside again. Curveball drill just out of the reach of Brett. It's in the corner. Willie Wilson takes it down. Marlin between second and third. inside and Maddox hit it right on that fat part. Willie Wilson got over there in good shape. Now in the championship series they made the play at the plate. Wilson overthrew UL Washington and went to Pratt but this time he hit the cutoff man. They got away with it. They call it their trailer play in the, in the championship series but what they did was miss the cutoff man. It's like going out to shoot an eagle. You kill a crow and they give you a medal. It was a bad play that paid off. With one out, Lee Elia, the third base coach, decided to hold up Marlon. Had there been two, he might have taken a chance. Now it's Manny Trio. Brett comes in tight at third, Aikens at first. UL Washington was about halfway with White. Now they're moving back. Gura will pitch from the stretch. Trio fly to center field to third. There is no score. One ball to Trio. Until the base hit by Moreland, the Philadelphia crowd has not had a whole lot to cheer about because Gura had shut off their water until that base hit. One ball, no strikes, one out. Two men on, second and third for the Phillies. Two and out. There's the base runner, Moreland at third, now Maddox at second. And you gotta wonder with Trio, who bats in the number five spot for the Phillies that time, that Gura might, with first base open, pitch around him. Make him hit a perfect pitch to pitch the ball. Oh, not the kind of guy you can double up too easily, but he doesn't hit the ball as hard to the outfield. 2 0. Oh. Fly ball, right center field. Jose counted out. Back to the warning track. Moreland will make it easily. The throw comes in as Moreland scores the first run of the ball game, and Maddox goes to play. Phillies lead 1 0.
So Keith Marlin scores his first run for the Phillies in World Series play today, and first ever for him in a World Series. So now Maddox is at third with two out. Bo is the hitter, and you've got to be careful. Brett knows it, and so does Aikens, even with two out, in case Bo tries to beat out a butt. So they are tight at the corners. Bo, the switch hitter, hitting from the right side. Line drive, base hit. Bo, an RBI single, scores Maddox. It's two to nothing. Necessarily lose everything. This he's gone through the Philly lineup once, and now they're seeing him for the second time. And now they know what he can do. They know what he can't do, and they're a little bit smarter hitters, possibly going through and seeing him for the second time. Bo with a good lead with two outs with Boot out. Ruben Amaro, who has seen that move of Gura several times. I believe he was talking to the umpire, first base umpire prior, about Gura's right foot going past the pitcher's rubber and then going to first base, which would be a ball. Two to nothing. We're at the bottom of the fifth. One strike. Eight of Gura's last 12 pitches have been fastballs, Tony. And Bob Boone, a dead first ball fastball hitter, a dead first ball high fastball hitter. He did get that one down in the strike zone. Our, you mentioned a while ago about the Phillies hitter catching up to him the second time through the lineup. Are you saying he is not adjusting soon enough or maybe incapable of adjusting and changing his pitting, pe pitching pattern because they've caught on to it? Maybe now, not realizing that he's got to start throwing more breaking balls. Maybe right. they have gotten on to his fastballs. Now it's time to start throwing some other pitches. Bo with an excellent lead. Way inside the boon. One ball, one strike. Two down. Phillies lead two to nothing, bottom of the fifth. Tom, you got Paul Mosco charting for you. If you were pitching, would he would a guy charting the pitches tell you that? Or would a coach tell you? How would you know? A coach could come to the mound and tell you what the chart says. Or if, if you come in between and he's sitting on the bench, you sit next to the guy that's keeping the chart, and he could tell you then. One and one pitch outside, two and one. You know, earlier this season, Tom, we did a Saturday game that you pitched, and Joe posed the question in the booth and asked you later about going to your catcher and continuously calling him out, what would you talk about if you call a catcher out? I want to know where those hitters are making contact with that ball. Are they hitting it out in front of the strike zone, even with the strike zone behind? Are they behind the fastball? Because if they're getting out in front of the ball, then I have to make adjustments to my fastball. Way outside, it goes three and one. Are you, what you're saying is that there are times, even on the rubber, when you release the ball, you can't tell yourself. I want to know. I want to know if the hitters are catching up with me, which is the way it seems they've done with Larry, Larry Gurry here, the last three or four hitters. Then you have to make adjustments in some of the speeds of the, of the pitches that you're making. The count is run to three and one on Bob Boone with two outs and Bo at first. He's got a good lead on Gura. He's not going. He walks. So now runners are at first and second. And Lonnie Smith will step in. Nine fastballs in a row from Larry Gura. He was a little upset about that last pitch. He thought that was a strike. And he's getting a visit from Billy Connors, the first visit out of the Royal Dugout tonight. You know, a few years ago, uh, when I saw Billy Connors as a minor league pitching coach for the Mets, I saw the kids play a ball game. He said he had seen you on television one day, and he said, I was to tell you when I saw you the next time about, so about some mechanical flaw he picked up, and he said he called you. I get called from Billy very often during the year. There's Marty Patton, it looks like, in the Royal bullpen. The senior member of the Kansas City staff. Billy calls me about three or four times a year, lets me know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. All right. Called me quite a bit this year. <laughs> <laughs> now you had a good finish. So, Billy Connors trip to the mound is over. Bo is at second. Boone is at first. Lonnie Smith, the hitter. There are two outs. We're at the bottom of the fifth with the Phillies leading two to nothing. Breaking ball for a strike. 
You don't think this game can change in a hurry as we look at Boa and Boone at the base runner second and first. We tied 13 men in a row. He gets a visit from the pitching coach. Larry's close to being taken out of this game. One strike to Smith. Another breaking ball. He's got him. He has going to more breaking balls. Well, he he called it right. Right after Billy had gone out to see him, right? Threw eight fastballs in a row. Billy Connors goes out to see him and says, hey, you got more pitches than that fastball you're throwing. First two pitches to Smith, curveballs. Let's see if he shows him the fastball now and comes back with the breaking pitch. Oh, and two, two and on. Wathen flashing the signs. He moves away. Now the breaking ball, check swing. Dura can't believe it. One and two. I can't understand the signs they gave two. The man on second base, he put down one and two. Here's the pitch, the curveball. You can call it from here. That's a pitch that girl will throw quite frequently to the right-handers. You can see Wathen set up outside, and he will have a curveball surround the outside corner and hope he gets the call. I just glanced over at Luciano. You should have seen his face on that pitch. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Two men on, Lottie Smith facing girl. Smith has flied out and struck out. Bow is going. Fly ball right field. Bow was off, but Cardinal should have it easily. He's got it for the third out, but the Phillies on three base hits, a sacrifice fly, a single by Bow. Take the lead after five, two to nothing. 1956, Don Larson. Let's take you back. Mal Allen's voice. The Yankees against the Dodgers, a perfect game. So far, Don Larson's not allowed a Dodger to reach base. Bill Hodges is the batter. There's a drive going to deep left center field. Mickey Mantle racing over, makes a great backhanded catch to preserve Larson's perfect game. The only one in World Series history. Going to the sixth in Philadelphia, it'll be Amos Otis, John Wathen, Willie Mays Aiken to face Steve Carlton. There's your score, two to nothing, the Phillies lead. Carlton is allowed six hits. Phillies finally got to Gura in the bottom of the fifth. Otis is grounded out, and he's hit into a double play. The Royals have stranded seven so far in this ball game. Two double plays have helped Carlton out, and six strikeouts also. One strike to Otis. They continue to force Carlton or try to force him to change his rhythm and his pattern as they step out. They've done an awful lot of that today. Coming into this inning, Tony, Carlton has thrown 82 pitches, which be a little bit above average. You probably average about 14, 15 pitches being a power pitcher thrown about an equal number of fastballs as breaking balls. Otis fakes a bunt. One ball, one strike. Kunkel's going out to talk to him about something. I wonder if he's going to maybe the cuts of the baseballs in the same spot. Well, there have been a couple of pitches in this ball game that I question. Tom Seavers knows they're just a moving fastball. You know what they're using, Tony? They're bringing, they're using a baseball, a World Series baseball, as opposed to a National League baseball that Carlton has been used to all year long. They're using the baseball that has 1980 World Series on it tonight. You mean the printing's going to bother him? Yeah. Come on now, you're not doing an operation. You guys, ball, you guys are all against the pitches. I mean. Are you well, kidding? the National League and Come the American on. ball is identical. It's exactly the same. It's made in the same place, stitched in the same place, Haiti. It's not the same. Same kind of hide. It's not the same. The color is the... different on there. <laughs> National League is black and the American <laughs> League is, is blue or green. I want to get this in as a catch. Your pitchers start out as kids with a taped up old baseball, then they get to the big leagues with a new ball, and you think they were brain hey, surgeons. Hey, now, wait a minute. Watch. Look at the hitter on the on deck circle. He's got pine tar, he's got rosin, he's got weights, he's got everything in the world of over there. He's got a lower mound. Top of the they set. Got it all in their favor. Two balls, two strikes on Otis. Phillies lead, two to nothing. Way inside, three to. I'll bet if we had a chance to ask Ron Luciano, we probably will. He could tell you that pitchers have thrown balls out. He's put the same ball in his pocket, thrown it right back out, giving the guy the same ball, and he threw it. He didn't even know the difference. Three and two 
Ahora, ahora es. Did you ever do that, Ronnie? Oh, all the time. You get that all the time. Every time we put it in the same pocket, and they'll ask for a ball, and we'll throw it out. The reason Kunkel went out to the mound, he said, listen, is the coloring bothering you or what? What do you want me to do with these balls? I've only got so many, and I keep giving you new ones, and you keep throwing them back. That's a dangerous question for an umpire to ask a pitcher what to do with those <laughs> balls. No, but that happens. There's only one pitcher in history for me in 15 years of umpire that ever threw out the same ball to me two or three times consecutively, and that was Jim Palmer. I put that same ball back in my pocket, and every time I throw it to him, he throw it back. 3-2, Kyle to the Davis Otis, breaking while almost got Steve Kyle to a vicious line drive right over lefty's head. So Otis with speed is on, but the Royals do trail by two runs. Seventh base hit for the Royals. There it is. It is no longer horse hide, it is cow hide. That change took place a while ago. That's an official American League ball with Mr. Lee McPhail, the president's name on it. It's the printing that does it for the pitchers, though, Tony. The printing. Otis in 1980, 15 of 16 stolen bases. The two runs now, well, we said last night, unlikely that Bowl would go. As Calvin goes 1-0 and on Wathen, and he went, and then Frank White did it later on in the ballgame in the seventh inning with his team down by three. And Boa Steele did seem to excite that Phillies team and surprise Leonard. One ball, no strikes. Wathen has popped out and flied out to right. Just missed. Two balls, no strikes. Wathen looking at Gordy McKenzie at third. Right now, we're going to pause briefly for stage identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WTWO, Terre Haute. I don't know where those last two pitches missed, but they did. It's now 3 0. Oh. There's your score. Phillies, two Royals, nothing. Top of the six. No outs. Joe Gargiola, Tom Seaver, Tony Kubek. Game number two of the 1980 World Series. He walks Watson. So once again, Carlton has two men on base. There are no outs. It's the fifth time in this ball game in six innings. The Royals have had two men on base against Steve Carlton. But he has struck out seven. And he has gotten a couple of double plays. 65,775 people here tonight in the vet. They've seen so far Carlton struggle along. Gura fits strongly. Gura's down two to nothing. Chopper could be trouble. Aikens does not win well, but he will do a job. Trio throws it away. A run will score. That's Otis making it two to one. As runners go on first and third, he was slow close to Pete Rose on that high hopper. He threw it too hard and he blew it right by Rhodes. Aikens, of course, Tony does not run well, and Trio got to the ball, made a pretty good play as the ball bounces very high, and he's right in front of him, and he would have gotten Aikens had it been a good throw. But throws it right by Pete, cost him a run. He really gets up to get that ball. I'm not so sure he threw it so hard. Right it? through the webbing. Right, looked like he was just kind of side-arming it to Pete and just went right by him. That replay showed very well. Pete's glove was on the ball, but it kind of, he got it on the end of the glove and it knocked it right back. The webbing did not break. But right now, we've got runners at first and third, no outs. Jose Cardinal, he pops it up out of play. They have scored an error on the throw to Trio. Boot out now. Now coming back from behind home plate. But that is the kind of play they've charged the air to Trio now. But after a ball game, the official scores can confer with the people involved, and they might change the decision. But right now, it's an air for Trio. Way inside and into the dirt. Cardinal wants to look at the ball. Phil's two, Kansas City one. There's Wathen at third. Aikens at first, not being held by Pete Rose. Aiken's been on base all three times today. A walk, a single, and now the air. Cardinal, he's struck out. He's hit a double play. Trying to check. Tough curveball. One ball, two strikes. 
Mariners had an outstanding breaking ball all night long, and another example of it, there's a situation where he wants a strikeout. First and third, nobody out. If he strikes Cardinal out, he can still get out of the inning with a double play, just one run given up. One and two pitch way outside goes 2-2. Two -two. Tom, that last replay from center field showed very vividly as we look at Wathen at third, Aikens at first, the strain on the pitcher's arm and elbow, the way that thing was contorted and the speed that was built up. Check swing. Boone asked for the appeal. Open up our Kunkel says, give me a sign. Pryor, Paul Pryor says, uh-uh. He did not go far enough. So now it goes three and two with Aikens on first and Wathen on third. Another example of the curveball you're talking about, Tony, really gets up, really wraps it, and pulls hard. This is a situation Carlton definitely wants a strikeout. Cardinal didn't go around. Paul Pryor made the right call. Will Akins be going? He's not. Breaking ball chopped in front of the plate. Wathen's going to score, but it rolls foul. Wisely, Pete Rose and Carlton, two veterans, let it scoot foul. You never know, though. That could be a very good play the way it stands, but with no outs, if they get at least one out, the runner at first or second, which may have been impossible, but we'll see what happens. Three and two, no outs. Phils two, Kansas City one. Again, that picture that we showed of Carlton from center field, it is no wonder when you see that. There's Wathen back to third, Aikens at first, that you see all the scars on the elbows and shoulders of pitchers these days. Jose Cardinal with a three and two count. Two to one, the Phillies lead over Kansas City, but the Royals have something going with no outs, runners at the corners. Fastball, he blew it by him inside and high. He had thrown breaking ball after breaking ball and set Cardinal up. It might have been a ball, but Cardinal could not lay off. Not on a full count. This is a good pitch, and he had to get the strikeout, and he got it, of course, which is the sign of the good pitcher. White's up there now, Tony, and the tying run is on at third base, and White can handle that bat. you got to look for anything. Well, he may do a number of things. He could bunt for a base hit. He could hit to the opposite field, but he'd like to have, most of all, a sacrifice fly, a pitch up in the strike zone, because he's primarily a high ball hitter that he can drive to the outfield where the sack fly will score a run and tie it. One strike. There's the alignment. Maddox very shallow in right center field. McBride about straight away right. Maybe shading a little bit toward the foul line. Big gap in left center field. One strike, one out. Chop foul. So Carlton way ahead of Frank White. White has struck out, but he reached first base when the ball got by Boone in the second. He grounded out in the fifth. Put you on the spot, Tom. No balls, two strikes. He struck out Cardinal with a fastball after a breaking ball died. He's gone, what? One fastball, one curve to White. What do you think he's going? I think he's one. He wants a double play with a ground ball on the left side over there. I think he's going to go with the slider. He's got two in this ball game. He's got it again. Boa to Trio to Rose. So the third double play for the Phillies. Carlton gives up a run, but it could have been a lot worse. So we'll go to the bottom of the sixth here in Philadelphia with a score. The Phillies two, the Kansas City Royals one, and here's that last play, the pitch you said he'd throw, Tom. Carlton did exactly what you have to do to get out of that situation. He struck out Cardinal and then gets the double play, leaves the tie and run at third base. Excellent pitching by Steve Carlton. Phillies two, Kansas City one. There's the score. Two up. Pete Rose, the number two hitter. Big McBride and Mike Schmidt. As we move to the bottom of the six, the Phillies are in front two to one, and the Royals have had to bring in Dave Chalk to play third. Evidently, George Brett's hemorrhoid condition has forced him to the sidelines. The Phillies, as they did last night, have shown an amazing capacity to come on strong when things look worse. Larry Gora retired the first 13, and the Phillies exploded for their two runs. Steve Carlton, on the other hand, has not been much of a mystery. Pete Rose set to lead off here. He got hit last night by Dennis Leonard. That ignited a rally. We turn it over to Joe and Tony. Brian, thank you very much. Pete Rose, one ball, no strikes. Larry Gura on the mound. Gura had 13 consecutive retired. Two to one, the Phillies lead over Kansas City. Pete Rose, right center field. Jose Cardinal's got it. So Rose has flied out three times in this ball game. Twice to center field, this time to right. Schmidt was the 13th consecutive man retired by Gura. That led off the fifth. 
seemed like a peaceful start for Gura in the fifth inning, but then Marlin singled, first base hit, the deep shortstop that Brett uh, could not get to, Maddox doubled, Trio with a sacrifice fly, Bo with an RBI single. Those are the two Phillies runs. Now it's McBride up with one out, one strike. City. One strike on McBride with one out. One and one. Kansas City scored their only run. It could have been worse in the sixth. With Otis single, walk and walk, air by trio. Cardinal struck out, White into a double play. Well, the string on a breaking pitch goes two balls, one strike on Big McBride. Big McBride, from what we've seen him, and I know he's had some problems with his knees, and part of it due to this hard artificial surface. He doesn't butt a whole lot, does he? he? Tries to make contact, Tony, especially with that hard dirt out in front of home plate here in Philadelphia. Not a good punter, just wants to get in play and utilize his speed. Two balls, two strikes to McBride. Here, show you spurts of power the way he did last night. You throw the ball down there where he can turn on it with that little bat. He can hit the ball out of this ballpark very easily. More of a contact hitter, though. especially a left-hander is kind of in a funny situation off a pitch like Gura because he can throw you any of four or five different pitches at different speeds. He missed away, so McBride is on first base with one out with a walk. Now it's Schmidt, the hitter. Second base on balls getting up by Larry Gura. Schmidt has grounded out the third twice in this game. But he was right on one pitch, one of the two times at bat, but it hooked foul just to the left of the pole. Mike Smith, Major League's home run leader this year with 48. As he did here last night, we'll say it again, he broke Eddie Matthews' record for the third baseman. Matthews had 47. Way outside again, he's lost his control. One ball, no strikes. Mike Schmidt. Well, he got behind Schmidt last line, last time, Tony, and ran into three and two, and Mike had two good cuts. One cut at a high fastball, he fell back. The other curved ball that he hit for home run, pull it foul, a foul home run, and he grounded out. Right at first. Foul out of play, one and one. Schmidt looked to me like he was carrying all the pressure in the world in those playoff games. Like he had to drive in the run every time and got to second base. And I think he was really frustrated. The Astros pitched him very well, came in here last night, game one of the World Series, but it looks like he's been a little bit more selective now. Calmed himself down more, maybe looking for his pitch, a pitch he can drive. One and one pitch to Mike Schmidt. You know, in those playoffs, though, even though Luzinski did not have a good year, hit just 19 home runs, because they tried so hard to pitch around Mike Schmidt, the Astros did. Lazinski had two game-winning RBI hits. Home run and a double to left field. Inside, two and one. And I think it's really something when a guy like Schmidt had the kind of year that he did, RBIs, home runs, cut down on his strikeouts considerably, and you figure Lazinski has backed him up so well down through the years with the good years that Schmidt still had a good year when they were trying to pitch around him at times. Two balls, one strike. One out, right at first, Phillies lead two to one. He gets it hard again, but it hooks foul. Two and two. You know, I've heard good hitters talk that when you hit the ball that hard, they really don't give that much credit to the pitcher. They say it's just bad hitting because you're too far out in front. Tom, I don't think that was the pitch at Gura would lay there to have him pull foul like sometimes pitchers will do. Not in, the, not in that situation right no, there. No, I don't think no, so. No, no way at all. He's trying to get a, the ball on the ground here. He wants a double play, get out of this inning if he can. In fact, well, Schmidt, th dry, you know, Schmidt runs well, but still, Gura's looking for the double play ball the way, same way that Carlton was looking for the double play ball last inning. Well, Joe and I both know a guy who uh, they used to pitch inside and make him purposely hit the ball foul. It was Yogi. They'd throw him two pitches. He'd wail him foul on the right field line. He'd be way ahead. 
Here's the pitch, drilled hard, base hit by Mike Smith on a 2-2 pitch. McBride will stop at second base, so the Phillies have two men out, first and second, with one out. They lead 2-1. to one. Frank White, you can see him putting the finger on his chest. He was telling UL Washington and Larry Gora with Marlin coming up, a ball hit back to the pitcher in a double play situation, which you've got now. I've got the throw. There's McBride at second. He has speed. Kansas City bullpen getting busy, Tony. Dan Quisenberry, he pitched last night. He's the man comes from down under with that fork ball also. He's warming up for the Royals. 33 saves on the air, tied with the goose, Gossage of the Yankees. Gura facing Moreland. He got the first base hit, a chopper, could be two. UL Washington, the white, good pivot to Willie Mays Akins. They double him up, so Gura with the sinker ball pitches out of the inning with a double play. So after six here in Philadelphia in game number two of the series, the Phillies lead two to one over the Royals, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Over the Royals, Larry Gura has given up just four base hits, but he's given up two runs. Steve Carlton has been able to come up with that big pitch when he needed it, and he is leading by a run. Carlton has struck out seven. He has walked three. He's had three big double clutch double plays. And here is Willie Wilson to lead it off. He's had a tough night. He's had a tough series. He has struck out the last four times that he has batted. Two balls, no strikes. And I'll tell you, if they stop him, they're going to stop that club. We're taking a look at the Kansas City dugout. George Brett is not in the dugout, obviously in the clubhouse, surmising we are up here that it was just too painful to play. And if you're a Kansas City Royals fan, you have to think about that because that fellow would not take himself out of a World Series game to begin with, especially a two-to-one ball game when his team is behind. Three and all, ball four. Brett was on base all three times in this ball game, a walk and two base hits off Carlton. So the tying run is on now. UL Washington and Wilson, we don't have to tell you. The official report on Brett, by the way, report from the clubhouse was just discomfort, which is another way of saying it just hurt too much to play. And you just have to believe that it did. Tough break for the Kansas City Royals, but much like the Houston Astros, when they got some bad breaks, they turned it around. Let's see if the Royals can do it. Wilson, who says, I just get a lead and I run. That's as, as simple as he makes it, and he's been pretty successful. They almost had him. Oh, they popped his shoestrings that time. He was really leaning. Jose Martinez is arguing once again about that leg kick, and that's the one where he tries to freeze the runner. The first time he's tried it tonight, where he paused, he hesitated a little bit longer. Here's Wilson being held by Rose. He got his feet tangled up. Many times a good base stealer will come in head first because it's, it's much more quick. Pryor, the man calling the play, National League umpire. Watch the late kick. That's a movie he hadn't shown before. Certainly looks like he's ready to take off, Tony. No question about that. There's the strike. First time he's been on base here in the World Series. A good guess you're going to see him running somewhere. out of 89 attempts in 1980 it's stolen bases for Willie Wilson 79 of 89 and he did not run indiscriminately he didn't run when they had big leagues or when they were way behind most of them were legitimate steals just like Ricky Henderson from Oakland Wilson a tremendous athlete I don't have any technique he says I just try and get a good lead and go out and run there he is he's a tying run Joe, with Brett out of the ball game, and we don't know what's going to happen. It's an off day tomorrow for game number three. But there is not one man on this ball club that can replace a great player like Brett. It's going to have to be a combination. Willie Wilson, McRae, they're all going to have to pick up part of the slack. Last ball misses one ball and one strike. He's got Wilson scared now, doesn't he? Well, I'm not Coming back. He's, he's faking him back. He's, he's popping him back to the bag. He's just not as sure as he was when he first got on. But look at that concentration. Look at him staring. Great shot. Different base runners watch different movements. Maury Wills, we had a shot of him. He and Brock, they would, it was a rhythm thing. 
Count, Flo. Bonnet back to Carlton. Carlton will have to go to first base. Trio just barely there, and they get him. And that bunt surprised him because Pete Rose was not charging. He was so intent on the throws over from Carlton that he didn't really, he wasn't really looking for a bunt. Here it is, UL Washington, a good, a fundamentally sound team. Carlton with a follow through as most left-handers do over toward the third baseline. He recovers as Rose couldn't get it. Trio barely gets over on time to get Washington. So now it's Dave Chalk who replaced George Brett and what a difference it makes. Chalk hit 251 in the regular season. And one home run. Down the right field line. Foul territory, everybody chasing it. No one can get it. And if he had caught that, Willie Wilson was tagging up. He was going to third, and he might have rounded the bag and kept on going. He's that fast. Here's Rose in pursuit. All this time, as Rose finds the stands in the warning track, Willie Wilson is standing on second base. And had Rose, had Rose caught that and did a tumble or hesitated, you might have seen Wilson try and score. slide and now the tying run is on at third base that's why they say he is a disruptive force he not only breaks your concentration he helps his own ball club by just making things happen look at that most pitchers don't care to try a pickoff move as we watch Wilson again a pickoff move towards second especially a little bit later on in the ball game as he steals it easily where they might throw the ball away in the center field now the infield is forced to come in it's high Two balls, one strike. Once again, Kansas City a chance to tie it up here. Carlton got a double play to end that sixth inning when they had a chance to tie it. Wilson is on. One man out. Two balls, one strike to count. High, three and one. This is the man he wants because the on-deck hitter is Hal McRae. Well, is the possibility of a squeeze play gone? Chalk is hitting in Brett's spot. It is always a possibility because Chalk is not that good a hitter. Walked him, and that's a bad piece of pitching, Tom. You know, he didn't have to face George Brett there, and you wondered if it went through Jim Fry's mind to, to put George Brett as a DH, let him sit over there and not have to play de uh, defense with the discomfort that he is having, just let him hit, possibly not lose his bat. Well, the reason he didn't do it, because then he would have had to take McCray out of the lineup mm. or put him defensively, which he did not want to do. McCray's had rotator cuff surgery. He didn't throw well or move around that well anymore. Here's McRae, two base hits, struck out in the fifth, two for three. Line drive foul. You know, some people, I'm sure, big Steve Carlton fans or whatever, are saying, well, it sets up the double play. But you're not about to set up the double play with the tie-breaking run and McRae in the batter's box. One ball and one strike of time when they say, well, you pitch around them. Not that time. Ray, a good hitter. Time run at third. Tiebreaker at first. One man out. Low curve ball. Two balls in one strike. We're in the seventh inning. There you see Willie Wilson. Chalk is at first. McRae. Single in the first, single in the third, struck out in the fifth. <laughs> off the handle, fouls it off. It's two balls and two strikes. Carlton certainly not very sharp tonight, Joe. That was a pitch. He was behind McCray, so I'm going to pitch out of the strike zone. Steve here in the seventh inning has already thrown about 120 pitches. Paul oh, Moscow just had me note 119 pitches so far. Ball three, he misses with the breaking ball. Now you got a situation. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Chalk taking a good look at McKenzie at third base. He wants to know, do you want me to run? And here's the 3 2 pitch. Booney really gets in front of it nicely. A classic stop. Chalk a lead. They got him picked off. And now Rose, he can't get anybody. Willie Wilson speed at third base, intimidated Rose, and now he's got to eat the ball. 
The same as Lonnie Smith's speed yesterday caused some problems for George Brett at third. Willie Wilson, who was not off the back that far, but as soon as Carlton threw the first, Chalk broke. They had him dead if Rose throws the ball quickly. Here it is. Chalk going all the way with McCray up. Look at that. He's worried more, Pete is, about Wilson than he was about Chalk. But now, they did have first base open work. They, do, they could do that to McCray, who's a tough RBI man in the cleanup hitter. So McCray walks to load the bases, and that brings up Amos Sotis. Joe, I've got to believe this, and we, we might have looked at that as a mistake. But when you know Pete Rose, no, no. Oh, wait a second. I ain't he that. might have thought. I want to hear his comment after the game because he might have said, "Hey, if I throw to second, Wilson might I score." I want to hear his this comment way, now. All right, this way, I, we can walk McCray and get to a little bit weaker RBI man and hitter. I don't buy it. Oh, he thinks that far ahead. Base is loaded. It was a stolen base for Chuck. Amos Otis. Hit into a force play, hit into a double play, and then single to center field. He has scored the one Kansas City run. Hit deep to right field, but it's curving foul. Strike one. For the second time in two innings, Joe, Carlton looking for the double play. Willie Wilson, the tying run just a little one base away, going around the horn chalk and McRae at first. And for the first time, we have action in the Philadelphia bullpen. Ron Reed warming up in the for the Phillies down behind the right field fence. And I'll tell you, Tony, I'm sure that Boa and Trio are thinking about McRae who's on at first. Possible double play. He's a hard slider. Fastball misses. One ball, one strike. One out. There's Ron Reed loosening up for Philadelphia. We are in the seventh. Two to one, Philadelphia. Six of seven innings, uh, Kansas City's had at least two men on. Nice play by Boone again. That curveball or slider, he's trying to keep it low, but he's really bouncing. He's throwing 55 footers. He really looks like he's struggling to me. A good view from the right field camera. Boone has done a fine job behind the plate. No reason there. A fine defensive catcher, Golden Glove catcher. He's getting that body in front of it to make sure that ball doesn't get past him. He's catching it on top of that. Two balls and a strike. Foul back. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Base is loaded. We're in the seventh. Philadelphia winning, leading two to one. Wilson is at third. Chalk at second. And McRae is at first. Said if Schmidt had had eyes in the back of his head, he might have had McCray who had rounded the back too far. He was playing well off the line for the hitter Otis. See how much room he gave him down there. The ball was hit hard down it. And Kansas City is taking the lead three to two here in the top of the seventh. Strike one on Wathen. 
Hopped to the first baseman, flied to right and walked. Amos Soda's drilled one past Schmidt, and McRae had ideas of scoring. McKenzie well up the line, stopped him. Joe, you had to wonder how long Carlton could keep going on and on, putting so many men on base before he got hit. Now it's Dallas Green out to talk with Carlton. Well, as Tom and Paul Mosco have pointed out, Carlton's made a lot of pitches, but I think the tip-off, Tom, was the curveball, or the slider, the hard slider. He just lost control of it, and he was throwing a 55-footer. 128 pitches so far, Joe. And, and How many ones, in a normal ones, game? I would say uh, normally between 120, 135, right in that range. And here he's still only in the seventh inning. But a lot of low sliders that he was throwing, and the ball that Otis hit was a hanging curveball. He didn't get it down in the strike zone. It's either way down below the strike zone or up in the strike zone. He's been struggling all night long. Big boy pitched 304 innings. He's done a fine job for the Phillies. Looks Walk. like Dallas Green's going to stay with him, too. Walks have sure heard of this inning. So, Carlton, as Dallas Green walks off, Carlton remains 3-2. to two. Kansas City leading here in the seventh. And they have base runners at second and third. Infield has moved in. Wathen. With the count of strike one, there's one man out. Got first base open with the left-hander Aikens up next and then Cardinal. One ball, one strike. Wathen doing a good job of looking at the third base coach. If nothing else, that puts the thought of the squeeze play into the minds of the defense. And that can be a pretty good weapon if you can get the other club thinking. handle center field tagging up is McRae should be deep enough tagging up at second base here's a throw to the plate and it is cut off Rose should get him at third they got him hung up Otis is hung up and he is tagged out Otis very wildly wisely stopped and gotten a rundown so he would not be tagged out before the runner McRae cost home plate so the run does count here comes the throw. The ball gets stuck in the webbing of the glove of Pete Rose as the run crosses home plate. But Otis, who is going, held up. Very smart pace running. That way they could not tag him before the run score. So we go in the bottom of the seventh. It's four to two. Kansas City leading the Phillies. It takes a lot more than talent to light up Broadway with a show like Dancing. It takes insurance. Oh, I got Without insurance protection for the theater, actors, and audience, no theater owner could risk booking a show, and there'd be a lot less glitter on the Great White Way. We're Crum and Forster, working with more than 9,000 independent agents and brokers, helping ensure the American way of life. any other name is not the same. Next time you wonder what white wine to drink, think of Gallo Rhine. And tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, it's games people play. Now, I told you last night, you're going to see the Cannonball Championships, but not ordinary Cannonball Championships. These are the World Cannonball Championships. You can wake up the next morning and tell them you saw the World Cannonball Championships. And Soupy Sales will be there, this custard pie throwing. That's something he's no stranger to. He's going to be throwing custard pies. I wonder if there's a difference. Then we've got skateboard uh. fever. And that's going to strike. That's got to be the hottest thing on four wheels. There'll be more tomorrow on games people play. But me, I can't wait for the World Cannonball Championships. I got to tell you something. I had a friend. Now, I'm going to get into this as quickly as I can. I had a friend in the south side of Milwaukee growing up who had a restaurant. And yeah. he had a bunch of fish and he used to throw raw meat to these piranhas. Yeah. And this is going to be a subtle, very smooth way of leading into a promo for a movie. Because immediately following games people play, if you like movies like Jaws, watch Piranha. Boy, you're that's slick. A, no, that's a true story about the guy on the south side. Oh. So, there is Quisenberry. You talk about impressive. Just look at that last statistic. Saves, 33. And that's what Kansas City is asking him to do right now. 
They wanted a tough game against Carlton. They got it from Gura, who's allowed only four hits. And now Quisenberry comes in to try to save it with Kansas City leading four to two. Last night, a ball game. They started young walk, the Phillies did, and it looked like the edge might have been with the Royals. And the Phillies won that ball game, and now they come back with their big A's, the number one man, Carlton thinking, hey, we would be happy to leave with a split. We may leave with two, but these Kansas City Royals say, uh-uh, we're going to battle you for it. And they may be beat the big man if Quisenberry can nail it down. Let's see what happens. Maddox, it's a strike. Well, Joe, he'll come right in throw you some ground balls. We saw Tug McGraw come in and get six quick, quick outs last night. Now Quisenberry's got nine outs to get. Save the first game for his Kansas City Royals. Low inside, and it's one and one. So you, you look at this series, it's going to be a dandy. It started out that way. There's a sinker to strike. Ruthman against Rick Gale on Friday night should be a pretty good matchup. Kansas City bench looking on. And the Royals and Royal fans hope that that off day now Brett, who recovered up to play in that third game. He was very questionable for day. Tried it, but then had to leave. Foul tip. Ball, two strikes. He's got a nasty sinker, Tony. I mean, he does. You look at him, you can tell Ken, Ken Tacova has worked with him. The ball just looks like it's going over a mountain, up and over a mountain. This, this spring got him to bend over from uh, uh, waist up this spring and also drop down a little bit lower where he got more action movement on that sinker. Get his arm under and he got his body lower to the ground as well, right. Maddox with a count of one ball and two strikes. There's a ground ball. Chalk has it. Long throw. In time nice play. He'll get a lot of ground balls, and I'll tell you, those right-hand hitters, that front foot's got to be talking to you when he comes from this side. This is a similar type ball that was the first base hit off Gora that George Brett could not get after. He's had some shortstop experience, Chuck, so he has excellent range, and he just showed it on this play. He kind of he kind of loops the ball from down under. You can't throw over the top when you're running away from third base that way, so you've got to side arm it or throw from down under, more of a sinker ball type throw. So there's one away, and here is Manny Trio, who drove in a run with a sacrifice fly. He fly to center field, his other time up. Another ground ball. This one is to Washington. There's a quick throw in plenty of time. Tony, there's a guy sitting in the visitor's clubhouse named Ace Kessler, who's been around his baseball some 60 years. He has seen 22 fathers and sons come to a big league clubhouse. We look at Pete Rose. I mean, he was here before Rose was in the big leagues. And Rose and young Petey may come through, and old Ace will be here. I, I, he is so excited with his first World Series. Waited a long time as Rose looks on the catalyst. There are two outs. sidearm sinker. Boa was in the record books tonight by being the third player. Rizzuto and Maury Wills, the other two in World Series history, to start three double plays. Steve Carlton looking on. He is trailing by two. I bet he misses hitting because he's a good hitter. Bouncing ball, Frank White. Easy inning, three ground balls. So Quisenberry came in and did what Fry wanted him to do, throw ground balls, one, two, three. At the end of seven, it's Kansas City four, Philadelphia two, and two up. It'll be Willie Mays Aikens, Jose Cardinal, and Frank White. 65,775 here. 16 people less than last night. Why didn't those 16 people show up? They're missing a tremendous ball game. Larry Gura and now Quisenberry. Gura gave up just four hits, but he was really battling. But these Royals came back to take the lead. Here is Willie Mays Aikens against Carlton. Strike on the outside corner. He walked, singled, and saved.
point in there. He had himself a cut. Two strikes. Bacon takes as big a cut as anybody in the National League. The first time I've seen him in the last two days, other than on television. When you saw him in the playoffs, and he lets that lumber go, doesn't he, Tony? Mm -hmm. He's a pretty heavy bat. He's up around 37 ounces. I wonder if he kept that same bat against Carlton with that good breaking stuff. One ball and two strikes to count. A little curveball all the way back. Gooney with no one on just kind of flagged it, which was smart. Two balls and two strikes. Willie Mays Aikens. Born during the World Series. The year of the catch, they call it. Now they're going to check the line again and visit a while. There is Pee Wee Reese. When or oh, when is he going to go to the Hall of Fame? How about Louis Aparicio, who didn't make it? It's okay. And Rizzuto. It's okay. And you just mentioned that. What do you mean it's okay? I is approve. That they should be voted in? Yeah. Oh, good. First time we've read all year. <laughs> They're going to measure it. Look at this. Uh, this game uh, may uh, be decided uh, by... Uh, have you ever done that? I've never had a tape. I've never had a tape measure. How far back is he going by tape? Do you know? Yeah, exactly 36 inches. They usually use a bat for that. Well, huh? it depends on what so what size bat. Yeah, you ask him what size bat it is and go back. Remember, any part of that foot touches the line, got him anyway. Any part of foot touches the line, he's considered in the box. So he can be 90% out and just part of that size 12 foot hitting the box. He's considered in. Before I let you, before I let you go, I want to ask you, where did he come up with the slide rule? <laughs> you know, none of us can see that. I uh, mean, but this, do you, you guys don't carry that, do you? He put it in for him. I'm sure Dick Butler from the American huh? League said, "Hey, you better get something out there because they're really on Willie." That is a first right there. <laughs> Pardon me, that is. <laughs> that is a first. This game could be decided by a carpenter. <laughs> One ball, no strikes, one out. Cardinal fouls it off, and that got Conco. Ouch. That really nailed him. He's got that big balloon protector, but that goes off the mask. Oh, Jocko Conlon used to wear that thing. I think if I was an umpire, I'd wear it, but look at that. Right off the mask. Boy, that'll just... If you got cavities or fillings, they're coming out. Boom. Look at that mask move. play that hurts too don't think it doesn't Ron a real quick answer I know what it feels like what does it feel like to that head of yours it just rings I'll tell you you can't see anything and you go by instinct after that the ringing in the ear is what it hurts but the trainer I heard tell an umpire when he said that don't answer the phone <laughs> just let it ring one and two two and two that got me kicked out of a game flip remark like that. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Kansas City leading four to two. We're in the eighth. Ruthman against Gale. Friday night in Kansas City. Hi. And these Philadelphia Phillies fans have had a chance to root their ball club. Royal fans will have a chance on Friday night. It'll be exciting. Back in Missouri, the old home state. Well hit, right field. Going back, McBride, all the way back. Warning track, makes the catch. Beautiful play by Beck McBride. I'll tell you, Jose Cardell can still not believe it, and that smile from Beck McBride, Beck McBride was showing the ball to Jose Cardinal, who was behind, between second and uh, first. Said, yes, I do have it. He got a good jump. He was playing him down toward the uh, down toward the line. Look at him limping on that leg. Some catch, I'll tell you. He made a good one last night, along with Maddox's play. So there are two away. We're in the eighth inning. Nobody's on. Four to two, Kansas City leading. Schmidt is very good on that play. He was playing just behind the bag, but one of the first things he looks for as most third baseman, that right hand on the right-hand hitter, when it starts sliding up, 
they make some unusual movement with that right hand, separating those hands, he began charging on White. One ball, one strike to count. Two outs, Tony, I think the, that bunt play, with two outs, I think the bunt play, trying to drag for a bunt is, I don't think that's a good play at all. Like you've got to try and hit a double, hit the extra base hit, unless you can get the bunt play and feel like you can steal second base. I would disagree with you for only this reason. The Kansas City Royal, to them with their running game, a single turns out to be a double in many instances with their speed. It's out of play. The count, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Steve Carlton, top of the eighth, Kansas City four, Philadelphia two. No, three and two the count, two outs. The Royals had nine players this year in double figures with stolen bases. three and two. This crowd has become quiet again like it did yesterday when the Phillies were down four to nothing. There's the Kansas City bench, Jim Fry. Sid, Dal Dal Dallas Green. I want to call him Darrell. Dallas. In the hole, base hit, Frank White is on. So with two outs, White singles to left. And that brings up Willie Wilson. I'll tell you, he struck out his first three times, but when he got a base on balls, sacrificed the second, he stole third, and then on a pickoff play, he intimidated Pete Rose to the point that Chalk went to second, they walked McRae, and then it all started. Otis, a big base hit, a double, and a sacrifice fly. And Kansas City took the lead. White stole 19 during the season. He did not have a big lead at all on that first pickoff throw. Still doesn't. Low ball one. That kind of decline of a butt does serve a purpose, because it'll draw that third baseman in three or four steps. And many times, they'll go back just two or three. So they've given ground on the turf where that ground ball gets by them. They don't have as good a lateral movement. Inside. I think I think he's really tired, Tony. The, the curveball that White got the base hit on, as you see Ron Reed in the bullpen, was not a sharp breaking pitch at all. That fastball seems to be a little bit flat. He's thrown 100 and almost 150 pitches, 149 pitches. There's the strike. Two balls and one strike with two outs. Willie Wilson. Gene Mock, I think, in his managing Minnesota, described him best. Most disruptive, productive, concentration breaker in baseball. I'll ask you this, Tom. You talked about all the pitches, and if we have time, I'll get to this point. With all the pitches he's thrown, Carlton is going to come back in this series to pitch a ball game if it continues to go on. Going to come back that, in four days, too. You bet. And that might have an effect on him later, throwing that many pitches. Foul out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs. Certain hitter, certain pitchers seem to have a limit to how many pitches they can go or throw. And when they go over that, it seems to affect them the next time. What was your limit? Exactly. My limit's about 125, 130 pitches. And if I get over that, it'll affect you the next time. So he's a big, strong man, but he's, uh, he's not a pitcher like a Nolan Ryan who can throw 160, 170 pitches and seemingly not have it affect him the next time. Right to Rose off his glove, Willie Wilson is on at first base. He's got himself a base hit. So, White moves to second. Wilson's on at first. And UL Washington is the batter. This after two were out. I don't know how Pete even got his glove on the ball. Holding White, and then he scoots off the bag. Watch this. He is so aggressive, he somehow just managed to get a piece of the glove on it. He did not get an out on it, but that ball is in the corner, and I'm going to tell you, 
they're going to score from first base on that, and Willie Wilson is going to be on third. Look at that. That ball is going way in the right field corner, and Frank White would have scored. I really believe with his speed. Curveball hangs outside, and it's ball one. Washington is one for three. He sacrificed his last time up. He moved Wilson into the scoring position. Curveball, that was a lollipop, Tom. You're looking at a tired pitcher right now, and a tired pitcher makes mistakes, Joe. No question about it. Why wouldn't he tell the manager? Tom? Why wouldn't the catcher tell the manager? If he asked me, I would. Exactly. Two balls and one strike. UL Washington. White is at second. Wilson is at first. Two outs. Yeah, good stuff on that one. Two balls, two strikes. City for Philadelphia two. We're in the eighth. Ah, a lot of play. He did not have a good swing at that one. He's thrown 158 pitches, Joe, in the last three pitches are probably three of the best that he's thrown in the last couple of innings. Sometimes that'll happen to a pitcher. Get that front leg up just a little bit more, take a little bit more time to deliver the ball. Get a second win, so they say. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs. UL Washington stepped out because Larry Boa tried to sneak behind Frank White at second base, and UL tried to step out to call time in case there was a pickoff on. Washington is out on strikes. That ends the inning. So the scores, we go into the bottom of the eighth. Kansas City four, Philadelphia two. You know, Willie Mays Aikens let off this inning, and I thought about Willie Mays. There was a great catch in right field by Bake McBride, and I thought about Willie Mays. 1954, the year of the catch. Let's join Mel Allen for a flashback. Don Little on the mound for the Giants. The score tied two all, two men on. Vic Wirtz at bat for Cleveland. There's a drive going to deep center field. After it is Willie Mays. He makes a spectacular one-handed grab inches from the wall. One of the greatest in series history as the Giants go on to sweep the series four games to none. Low inside, ball one. Bob Boone. Bob Boone, one ball, one strike. By the center field, walk. Crowd reacting. Off the handles. He is tough on right handed hitters. Wisenberry. Sinker ball at Tom Seaver told you about. He throws a slider from down under, but it's not the kind of slider that you can get on top of, obviously. It is mostly a flat slider. He does not try to throw it against left-handed hitters, more to right. He uses that fork ball more often against left-handed left -handed hitters. He's got to hit your way on with him, Tom. He doesn't walk too many. His out pitch, definitely that underhand fastball, though, that good sinker. He misses, low and inside. Two balls and two strikes. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Kansas City leading by the score of four to the two. Nobody on, nobody out. Bob Boone, two balls, two strikes to count. Quisenberry in relief. Another bouncing ball. I tell you, when he pitches, those grub worms just can't sleep around home plate. He just beats everything down. You know, he got three ground balls in the seventh inning, and not one of those on their first bounce got out as far as the artificial surface. They all hit in the dirt. A little circle right in front of home plate. His ball is really sinking. Crowd. Reacting. Two balls, two strikes. Off the handle. Wisenberry 
Murray trying to nail it down for Kansas City and Larry Gura. Big ball game. They would then go to Kansas City tied one game apiece. And it'll be Ruthman for the Phillies against Rich Gale. You'll hear quotes like, we were happy to leave with a split. Misses, three and two. Shows how to move a man. 
he just tried to get that head of the bat out in front. The cock was playing very shallow in case Pete tried to bunt. Prisonberry over as his white, but Rose does the job. Interesting there, Tony. You look at him as he crossed the bag. He's looking back over his shoulder to see if the runner's at third base. That's really the only thing Pete cared about there. For a minute, it looked like that ball was going to bounce over Lecoq's head. Trying to do his job. Almost got a base hit out of it. So there's one out. Unser, the tying run is at third, and Beck McBride is the batter. He's 0 for 2. One of the interesting stats about Quisenberry this year for the Royals, he entered 38 games when the Royals were ahead, and he kept it that way in every one but two games. Let's see if he can do it here. High chopper, base hit. has done to this game of baseball. The infield in. One bounce. Almost to what would have been the outfield grass had we been playing on dirt and grass. But it did the job, didn't it? So we're all tied up. Well, it's like Richie Allen said. I said it before the game. He doesn't like to play on grass or horse candy. And for the Philly fans, they love it. It's all tied up. Here is Mike Schmidt. see it wiped out. And Dallas Green is a happy man inside, at least. That brings up Moreland. Infield is moving in. One man out. 5-4. Phillies lead.
has come in from the bullpen, thrown all fastballs. A good shot of Moreland lining a fastball right up the middle and getting an RBI. And there's another young, happy fella. Another important thing, Tony, that's happened in this inning, Mike Schmidt has been hurt from. That may take a lot of pressure off of his shoulders. He's hit an extra base hit, driven in a big run. It may take a lot of pressure off his back. And Greg Gross is coming in as a pinch hitter for Maddox. It's six to four, Philadelphia. It's a strike. Wisenberry, the ace reliever for Kansas City. There you see Gross. This is an unusual move, I think, because you're removing your best defensive outfielder when you've got a two-run lead. That's Maddox. And I know you've got a lefty versus a righty here. Offensively. I don't know if that's the important thing right now. Had you leave. Perhaps he left because he was hurt, pounding that ball off his instep. Maddox. Could be. Try to get a report. One ball, one strike, one out. Strike. The added, uh, the added pressure that is put on this Kansas City team if they can't come back, and you see the two managers. The fact that you mentioned Carlton, they almost had a beat. There is Ken Brett, the brother of George. He's been in the World Series play before with the Red Sox. But the fact that the Phillies are doing it against their best reliever. High chopper pull foul. Ruben Amaro first base gets a few all-star game votes by flipping the ball in the stands two balls two strikes one out Phillies come roaring back here against the ace reliever Wisenberry Jim Prine going a long way with it bouncing ball Washington one white two double play that ends the inning but a good inning for the and listen to these fans. It's six to four at the end of eight. So, in the ninth inning for the Kansas City Royals, they trail by two, six to four. Fans that come alive, two up, will be Dave Chalk, Al McRae, and Amos Otis. the ninth inning Philadelphia leading six to four and Greg Gross goes into play left field Del Unser who got a big double is in center field and the new pitcher is Ron Reed so Steve Carlton leaves after eight innings Carlton struck out ten and the last pitcher to strike out ten or more in a World Series game was Tom Seaver with 12, 1973. There you are, Tom. Did you know that? All right. You caught me by surprise. I didn't the slightest idea. The rag arm you've got. I don't know how you could have <laughs> So we got a pinch hitter coming out. Porter, Daryl Porter will be the pinch hitter for Chuck. Green going with Reed. Of course, he wants to rest McGraw with a two-run lead after yesterday in the championship series, but he had a string until his pitch hitter of four consecutive right-handed hitters, Chalk, McCray, Otis, and Wathen. It is not the strongest bench as far as popping the ball out of the ballpark uh, for the Royals. Fastball is high. Oh, no strikes. Well, there'll be all kinds of things about it. If you lose the first two, how many teams have done this and done that? I can go back to the last time we did a World Series, what happened. There's a strike. The Yankees and the Dodgers, and the Yankees lost the first two, came back and won the series. Tom Lasorda, who's sitting right down there, will remember it. Porter 0 for 2 in the ball game yesterday, but he did walk twice. Bullpen for the Phillies, Dickie Doles, the right-hander, Kevin Saussier, the left-hander. There's Marlon. Normally a catcher, he's been DH, and he's going down to help out. Far 
starts. He wants to get the blankets. Off the handle, out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Ball game, not only in the terms of who wins or loses, a lot of questions for Kansas City. Out back. Will Brett be able to play? How about the treatment Quisenberry got? Is Mike Schmidt finally coming alive? Big ball game. Be Friday night. was looking for, but Ron Reed snuck a fastball right by him on the outside part of the plate. Maybe looking for a changeup. All fastballs that Ron Reed had thrown to Daryl Porter here, threw a fastball simply right by him. Daryl had to be fooled somewhere. Reed is not as consistent as he was a couple of years ago, but he still has streaks of throwing very hard. He just did it to Porter. There's Fry. He's thrown it by him. Strike one. He is pumped up. Likes him to come in and just go hard at the hitter. Ron got a good fastball. Likes him to come in and go right after him. Be very aggressive. One ball, one strike. Seems to be the story as we look at Dallas Green and the Phillies bench with the relief pitcher. He just wanted to come in and play good old country hardball. Don't think, just throw. Good fastball, and it's one ball, two strikes. If you look at this ball game, the Royals through eight stranded ten base runners. Carlton struck out a bunch and also some double plays. Philadelphia stranded as far as my unofficial count, just four in this game. They made the most of their hits. Two balls, two strikes. One man out, nobody on. Six-four. Philadelphia leading. Ninth inning. Ooh. Three balls, two strikes. Maddox, the official word, taken out because it bruised, he bruised his left knee on the foul tip. <laughs> Chopper up the middle in the center field. So the tying run is at the plate. Ray with his third base hit of the night. Struck out in the fifth, walked and scored in the seventh, so he is three for four, a big night. And that brings up Amos Otis, who's had a big night. Otis, that big double in the seventh inning. Schmidt's now going to have a conference with Ron Reed. You know, McCray just showed you a pretty good piece of hitting because all he was trying to do, he puts the ball in play, which is so important, an artificial surface. He was just protecting the plate. He had a bad pitch. And yet he got the single on the turf. Otis, who is five for nine in this World Series with one home run and four RBIs against Ron Reed. One man out. Ninth inning. Strike. Otis had a high breaking ball in the game one here for a home run. I'm sure Booney's going to give him a good diet of, say, cut fastballs and sinking fastballs into him. I don't imagine he'll get much soft stuff. the concentration by Reed. Otis had backed out plenty of time, but he was thinking so much of what he was going to do and where. He just almost threw it. McRae's at first base. One out. Tying run at the plate. Six fours to score. We're in ninth. Foul ball. They're not getting around. They're having very weak swings off Reed. Maybe partly his motion with that big leg kick and all the elbows, kneecaps, but he's also thrown very hard, I think. Pete Rose, former teammates. Pete, a goodwill ambassador. Business with everybody. Outside. One ball, two strikes. Amos Otis. The classic 
example. As Booney gave the sign, he motioned inside. He gave the target outside and then moved back in. But how Otis could take that pitch, I don't know. Great eye, I guess. Just lucky. Two and two. ball out of play. He's battling. He's battling. I think one of the big advantages that Ron Reed is showing that a relief pitcher has when he comes in, Tom, is they face Carlton through most of this ball game the first three times around or so. And he's giving him a lot of breaking balls from the left side, obviously. Then a relief pitcher comes in with a different motion, different delivery, different speeds, different movement on the ball, and they see him just that one time. That has really cut down batting average, I think, the relief specialist. Ball out of play. Otis continues to battle round Reed. I'll tell you, as far as they're concerned, they're the only two guys in this ballpark, and we got some 65,775 here tonight. game from Pete Rose. Hal McRae. Routine flip. Tree is going to get out of the way. McRae comes very hard. Been six double plays in this game. That ties the record. Four by the Phillies ties the record. That double play, if they'd have been able to make it, would have broken a couple records, but Trio said, I'm going to get out of before I get broken. It's a strike on John Watson. Reed is going to try to nail it down in this crowd on its feet. Six to four, two outs in the ninth. Tyne runs at the plate. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. 
Kansas City. The final score here, Philadelphia Phillies six, the Royals four. The winner was Carlton, the losers, Quisenberry. Schmidt gets a game-winning RBI. And Merle Harmon is with Jim Fry. Let's get a report from Merle Harmon on the Royals, especially George Brett. Merle? All right, Joe, Jim Fry here, and George Brett left a lineup when a player of George met uh, Brett's magnitude leaves a lineup, you're going to get hurt. What about George? Will he be back? Well, we hope he can be back. I tried to get him out of there before it became too severe. It was starting to bother him, and I told him before the game that if it was bothering him to let me know, he came out of there. We scored, and we had the lead after he left the ball game. All right, now. What's the routine for him tomorrow? Will he undergo treatment in Kansas City? Can he come back Friday night? Well, we're hoping so. That's one of those things we have to wait and see. Day by day, we're hoping that the treatment for the next couple of days will help him. All right, Jim, now your backs are to the wall, so to speak. You're going home. What's the home field advantage in Kansas City for you? Well, I think it's going to be an advantage for our ball players to have the crowd. You could see the crowd reaction here tonight. I think it helps. If you remember last year, the team that won the first two didn't win the series, so I'm hoping the same thing happens this year. All right, Jim, good luck to you. We'll see you in Kansas City. Back to you, Joe. Okay, Merle, our thanks, too, to Jim Fry after a tough, tough loss to stop to tell us. We'll be back with more from Veterans Stadium, but there's the final score, 64. We'll be back. You join us. Mike Schmidt had a big base hit. Merle Harmon's with him, and we want to hear how he feels, Merle. All right, Joe, uh, I know that Mike feels pretty good at this stage. Booming triple off of Dan Quisenberry. Now, you faced Colby all year, so Quisenberry probably wasn't too much of a mystery, was he? Well, not really. Of course, I, I had watched him in the playoff games, and I'd watched him pitch to every right-hander he threw to, and uh, I hit a good pitch. You know, I, it didn't very often I hit the pitch down and in like that to right field, and I didn't want to let him get ahead of me. Uh, I had been taking the first pitch quite often uh, last night and tonight, and I just thought I was going to go ahead and get a hack at that first one if it, if it looked good to me. And uh, I was lucky enough to get it over Jose's head in right field. The ball hit the bottom of the wall, bounced straight up. It didn't kick right back to him. Okay, you've had to come from behind twice now in these two ball games. What has this meant to the team? Well, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. Uh, it's a great feeling to have when you're down in a ball game to feel like uh, five games in a row you've overcome the lead. Uh, uh, it's a real feeling of confidence. Uh, but I, I tell you what, I don't enjoy being down. It's, it's sooner or later we're going to have to get some runs and get ahead of them and, and let them come back. They're a great ball club. You saw in the last inning how every one of their hitl hitters battled right down down to the wire, and uh, there's still a lot of baseball to be played. You guys weren't really tired coming into this series, were you? Oh, no, you, ain't no way you can be tired <laughs> playing in the World Series, Merle, no way. And no now way. it's now it's on to Kansas City. Congratulations. Well, that's right. Thank you very much. One thing's for sure, though, we get to play back in Philadelphia, right? <laughs> okay, Mike. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. All right, Mike Schmidt, now let's go to Brian Gumbel. Okay, Merle, thank you much. Besides going up 2 nothing, one has to be impressed by the Phillies' resiliency and by their ability not to waste much. They stranded only three base runners tonight, and and only six last night. By contrast, the Kansas City Royals are down two games, and there are some ominous signs. Their best right-hander, Dennis Leonard, failed to win. Their best left-hander, Larry Gura, failed to win. Their best reliever, Dan Quisenberry, was bounced around tonight. Their best hitter, George Brett, has a hemorrhoid problem that figures to keep him hampered throughout the series. And their best run producer, Willie Wilson, is only one for nine with five strikeouts. Indeed, as they head back to Kansas City, things have to improve for the Royals. We'll Odds are you sell your house faster if you tell more people about it. That's what this machine does. Like any agent, I find buyers locally, but I can also send a picture and description of your house to buyers in any one of our 4,000 offices. It's like a national multi-list, and only ERA has this system. Think about the odds and then call us. We can find more buyers. That's another reason your ERA real estate specialist is the person you need to know in real estate. I needed the mileage of a Toyota Cressida, but it didn't have enough room. What I needed was the room of a Volvo, but it didn't get good enough mileage. What I needed was a Citation. What I didn't need was the price. What I needed was a miracle. What I found was a Fairmont. Ford Fairmont. It makes a world of sense. A world of better ideas coming from Ford. Last place on earth. Look at all this. Uh, dear. Like my boutique. Cute. Yeah, we just have traveler's checks. City Corp? Yes. Love them. 
Imagine City Corp Traveler's checks are even accepted in the last place on Earth. Our lucky day. Travel the world with us. City Corp Traveler's checks. Here's to good friends. Tonight hey, is Phil, special. I thought you were taking us to dinner. I am. Okay, where is it? You're standing on it. What? So hey, a clam bake. <laughs> I suppose he got Lowenbrow, too. Yep. Yeah. You want the taste of a truly great American beer. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. Bill, that was fantastic. Hey, I only take my friends to the best places. <laughs> well, for the fifth time in postseason play, the Philadelphia Phillies came from behind, and tonight they defeat the Kansas City Royals by the score of 6-4. to four. The winning pitcher, Carlton, the losing pitcher, Wiesenberry, Mike Schmidt had a big game-winning RBI to save to Ron Reed. So, Phillies win the two games played here in Philadelphia. Now it's on to Kansas City. The momentum certainly is with the Philadelphia Phillies. But as you heard Jim Fry say, we're going home, our hometown fans, and that'll be on Friday night with Ruthman against Gale. So, final score, once again, Philadelphia 6, Kansas City 4. For Tony Kubek and Tom Stevens, Joe Garagiola saying so long here from Philadelphia. Game 2 of the 1980 World Series has been brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer who invite you to test drive the new 1981 Ford cars and trucks. And by Lowenbrow, when you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. And by Kodak, America's storyteller. And by Gillette Atra, the pivoting head raiser. The pivot makes it better. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. The coordinating producer of baseball is Michael Weissman. The telecast of tonight's game has been produced by George Finkel. Directed by Harry Coyle. Free game produced by David Stern. Free game and replays directed by Ken Fouts. Technical director Horace Ruiz. Associate producers Michael Hadley, Peter Roth, Glenn Adamo, and Bill Peters. Associate directors Richard Klein, John Filippelli. Production manager Steve Foreman. Now remember, tomorrow night it's games People Play and Piranha. And then Friday, Game 3, Ruthman against Gale. Uh, World Series on NBC, Game 3. Stay tuned for late news, followed by the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson on the West Coast, most mountain time zone stations. These programs will be seen at their regular time.